Palmer, former F1 driver, and Jack Nichols as well. And Jack, the top kind of six, maybe even eight of this race start is fascinating. We've got Hamilton, then Verstappen, Bottas, Perez, Ricardo Sainz, Ocon, Norris. That's the top eight. And that could be a very dramatic start, couldn't it? It's a really, really long run down towards turn two. Hamilton starting on pole position on a different tyre compound to Verstappen and Bottas behind him. Perez has the chance of getting a good start and a good slipstream. I, 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 it's, re it's really difficult to know what's going to happen come the end, of, and the end of turn two because you don't have a Mercedes front row. And that is what makes it quite exciting because in the past, even a you know, a Monza or somewhere else with a long run down towards turn one, you know that one of the Mercedes is going to be leading the, the Grand Prix. Maybe Verstappen can split them, maybe Perez can split them, whatever. But here it's, it's very different. Verstappen's going to want to be aggressive, but is he going to be able to do anything? Because he may not be getting a slipstream if he gets a sort of better start than Hamilton. There's a lot of unknowns on the charge down towards turn two. The charge down to turn mm -hmm. two. I love that. Um, OK, it's the first time since round two. That's in Styria when Mercedes don't have a front row lockout. Jolian Palmer, who would you rather be now? Would you be Hamilton in pole well, on the question. softs? Me thanks. Medium yeah. for uh, Verstappen in second place or Bottas third place on the mediums or anybody else. Am I allowed Hamilton's level of talent if I start on pole on the soft? <laughs> because I think that's what it might come down to. I think if Hamilton was in third on the mediums, I think I'd rather be Hamilton in third on the mediums. But Hamilton on pole on the soft, I think I'd take Hamilton on pole on the soft. So you just basically. want to be Lewis Hamilton? I think he's got the best chance of winning this race because he's Lewis Hamilton, fundamentally. More than Valtteri Bottas. I think the wild card is going to be Max Verstappen. Starting second, I fear for Max that um, he might get edged out at the start, depending on Mercedes' start tactics. If Hamilton slipstreams, gives Bottas the slipstream down to turn two, I think it could be a long run down for Max. Honda power unit, maybe not quite as uh, zippy down the straights as the, the Mercedes of uh, Hamilton Bottas and Sergio Perez in the racing point starting fourth. Could be a tough start for Max. If he can get through that, he can win the race. Just having a listen in to Lewis Hamilton's radio. Now, he is under investigation at the moment. He did a practice start, and I was just listening to what he was saying to his engineer, Pete Bonington, and he said, oh, can I just start down here? And he was like, yeah, hey, firm, you can do that. Um, but he is under investigation. Um, Jack, what could that mean for, for Lewis Hamilton, potentially? Well, I, I don't know, to be perfectly honest with you, because as far as... <sighs> I didn't, I think I didn't realize it was illegal to do a practice start not in the practice start box. I thought the practice start box was put there to sort of give you somewhere to do a practice start, not to say that you could not do one at any other point on the circuit. So, yeah, I, I, I'm quite surprised. Uh, well, no, not surprised he's under investigation, but I would be surprised. He's not going to get a grid drop. Surely he's not going to get a time penalty. I can't really see anything coming of it. Jolien, was the, did you do... I mean, maybe I'm throwing you under the bus here, but there are some tracks... Are there tracks where you can't do practice starts? There's no way to do that. Monaco? I think it's beyond the end of the pit wall that you're not allowed to do practice start. You're just so not allowed. They, they, that's why they have the start box in a certain place and if you go beyond it, then you're not supposed to do that. I'd be, I'd be surprised if that incurs a time penalty for the race. I imagine that would be a reprimand for Lewis Hamilton. It seems like a really non-sporting advantage to be gained by that, but rather just a, a slip of the, of the rules, really, from what Michael Massey would have laid out. Um, I don't, I don't think it'll be a, anything more than a reprimand. We shall wait and see, because sometimes we're surprised by the stewards' decisions. Well, there are five minutes to go until the start of this race, so it definitely won't be a grid penalty, because that would be a real mess if that was going to happen five minutes before the start of the race. Um, but, uh, Jolien, just tell me, Sochi, um, you know, we first went there in 2014. Lewis Hamilton was on pole position then and won the race. Hasn't won since... Uh, sorry, hasn't been a pole since then, but has won. But what do you, what do you need to be able to do to win a race around Sochi? What are the elements that we're looking out for? The start's going to be very crucial, really. Long run down to turn two, and, uh, and the slipstream's going to be very effective. 
if Hamilton can hold off, then really overtaking around this circuit is not that easy. We've seen very few crucial overtakes in, uh, in previous years, but he's also going to have to nurse those tyres, Lewis Hamilton, because he starts on the soft and the two behind him start on the medium. That might actually help him off the line, but then he's going to be into a race of more tyre management on the, uh, the more um, higher de degrading soft tyre than the medium. So that's really two parts for Hamilton. Get the start. If he doesn't get the start, he's going to have to overtake. And uh, otherwise, he's got to just then look after the tyres more than the others. Can I ask a favour of you? No, sorry. Can I, <laughs> can I put you on wind watch today, please? Because I've spoken to a few of the teams. McLaren are very um, sort of affected by the different winds that you get around here. And they reckon that that's a feature for a lot of the different cars. They're affected worse. So um, crosswind, headwind, tailwind, that's going to be quite important, isn't it, for a lot of these cars? Yep. We've seen over the weekend a few drivers in the wall, actually, at various times through practice. Sebastian Vettel in the wall in qualifying. It's a very flat circuit and it's very exposed to the elements. The wind has been high. It actually looks like it's a little bit lower right now. But... Yeah, it can make it very challenging. A headwind into turn two would really increase the chance of overtaking. On my monitor, it says we've now got a bit of a tailwind into turn two, which will help Lewis Hamilton defend that first position into the first corners. But yeah, it, if it changes around, moves around, gusts, it'll be very hard to drive. So here's the note from the, uh, from the race director. This is what it says. For reasons of safety and sporting equity, cars may not stop in the fast lane at any time the pit exit is open without a justifiable reason. A practice start is not considered a justifiable reason. So that is pretty clear to my mind that Hamilton did break that rule. Now, but is it a rule that you should get a penalty for, or is it just a rule that that's what you have to do? And it's almost a, it's just, it's just weird. It's just a weird rule that you don't really break. So why would you need a penalty for it? Do you know what I mean? If he gets a five second time penalty, he's in big trouble to win this race yeah. because he'll effectively lose track position, whatever happens. He's on the soft tire. Verstappen and Bottas can just trail him to the pit stop. And when Hamilton pits, he has to take five seconds in the pit stop. The others will just jump him. And this pit lane is a pain because it's long and you have to go at 60 kilometers an hour. It's normally 80 kilometers an hour. So the pit loss is really big, a 25 second pit loss for those coming into the pits. That's why people will want to go on a one stop strategy. And that's why you don't want to have to come in and lose more time to a pit stop. Right. We have about a minute and a half until the start of this race in Russia. It's round 10. What will Hamilton do from pole position? We shall see. Let's cross over to our commentary duo. It is Julian Palmer and Jack Nichols. So everybody at the wheel of their cars. Lewis Hamilton can equal Michael Schumacher's record of 91 Grand Prix if he wins today. But he is under investigation for doing a practice start outside of the designated area. The team told him he could do it. But that appears to be against the rules. What will the penalty be if there is a penalty? I think the other thing to keep an eye out for today is that this is the first kind of tyre limited Grand Prix that we'll have had at Sochi. They've brought the softest compound here, Pirelli, and so I think there will be a little bit of sort of strategy and tyre management involved in this race, which may assist the sort of entertainment of the Grand Prix. There certainly will for Hamilton because he's on that soft tyre, yeah. as is everyone else in the top nine of the field, apart from Verstappen and Bottas starting second and third. Alex Albon is as well, because he qualified 10th. He starts 15th with a grid, uh, a grid penalty for gearbox change yesterday. So Hamilton's not the only one in this boat to try and make a one-stop strategy work on a, on a frail tyre, really. It's going to be a, a long afternoon for him either way, and that's all because of that Q2 mix-up yesterday. So... Hamilton on pole position. Verstappen will be alongside him on the front row. The revs rise. The cars pull away now on their formation lap. It's 10 past 12 here on 5 Live Sports Extra. Time for the Russian Grand Prix.
So Hamilton will start on pole. He's on the soft tyre. Verstappen is alongside him on the front row on the mediums with Valtteri Bottas in third position, also starting on the mediums. The rest of the top nine starts on softs with Perez in fourth, Ricardo fifth, Sainz, Ocon, Norris and Gasly with Charles Leclerc competing the top ten on the medium tyre. Dano Kofiat starts on the hard in 11th spot. It's 12th for Lance Stroll on the mediums. George Russell in 13th. Sebastian Vettel is 14th. Alex Albon got given a five-place grid drop for a gearbox change. Roman Grosjean is 16th on the grid. Giovinazzi, Magnussen, Raikkonen and Latifi, the 20 drivers. Now, trouble for Kevin Magnussen at the start as well. He didn't get away in the Haas. He's dropped behind Kimi Raikkonen and Nicholas Latifi. But I... Uh, that shouldn't be too much of a drama. He should just be able to, to pass the two cars in front of him. Yeah, he, he got away very slowly and uh, needed a bit more assistance from his uh, his team. I wonder if that's a, an issue that the team was still on the uh, on the grid trying to get him going in the end afterwards. But it looks like he, he will be able to retake his grid position anyway. He's not far behind the pack and he can pass them all before the uh, the final safety car line. So the car's making their way around now then. And uh, Russell then starting in 13th position on the grid, which is encouraging for him. Kvyat on the Alfa Tauri on the hard tyre could be in for an interesting afternoon, doing basically the reverse strategy to everybody else. A reminder that Lewis Hamilton leads this world championship by 65 points over his teammate Valtteri Bottas. Max Verstappen is quite away adrift, so now it's all about sort of fighting for pride, really for uh, Vex Verstappen. Now he's not in title contention. What can he do off the start on that long, long run down towards turn two? Nicholas Latifi also got a five-place grid drop, so... Yep, the cars are just coming around the final turn now to line up on the grid and start this race. Lewis Hamilton will be on pole position. He's on the soft compound of tyre, which is not the ideal one to be starting this Grand Prix on. Max Verstappen on the mediums is alongside him on the front row in the Red Bull, and Valtteri Bottas in the other Mercedes is third. Hamilton is also under investigation for doing a practice start in the wrong position, so we don't know if he's going to get a penalty for that. Jolian Palmer, the former Renault F1 driver, is with me for commentary, and this is going to be a fascinating run down to turn two. It's going to be critical. Hamilton on the soft tyre should have a bit more grip, but the two behind him will pick up up his slipstream and try and slingshot into turn two. It's the longest run down to the first break he's owned on the calendar. Jenny Gow. Yeah, Pole has only won two out of the last six races and it's not won in the last three years. Nicholas Latifi in the Williams lines up at the back of the field. He's just coming around the final turn now. Hamilton has been sitting in pole position, waiting. There's going to be a lot of slipstreaming and a lot of overtaking down to the first braking zone at turn two. Hamilton is on pole position. Max Verstappen is alongside him on the front row of the grid. The Russian Grand Prix gets underway. And it's a decent start from Hamilton. Verstappen hasn't got away well, and he has to come across and lose his position to Valtteri Bottas. Daniel Ricciardo is the man who gets the best start. Hamilton, though, is pulling away in the lead. But now Bottas is starting to close in on him as they come into the braking zone for turn two. Bottas breaks and goes round the outside of Lewis Hamilton. Can't quite keep control. And Hamilton gets back in front. Verstappen takes the runoff area, and there's a big crash. And I think it's Carlos Sainz in the McLaren who's gone into the wall. Hamilton leads. Bottas is second. Third now is Daniel Ricardo in the Renault, fourth is Max Verstappen, fifth is Esteban Ocon in the other Renault, and there's a spin across the track for Lance Stroll, who's in the barriers as well. So Stroll has crashed out of the Grand Prix, as well as Carlos Sainz in the McLaren. There'll no doubt be a safety car in a couple of moments' time, but somehow, Jolien, Mercedes have ended up with a 1-2 at the front. Yeah, and Bottas with huge aggression for the first time this season at the first corner, tried to go around the outside of Hamilton, and just about overcooked it and Hamilton came back through. Max Verstappen completely overcooked it and went wide through the runoff area, lost the place to uh, the Renaults, but he since got that back. Ricardo's then lost a place to his teammate Esteban Ocon as well. Stroll's hit the wall, exited turn four, and Carlos Sainz is in the wall, exited turn two. So terrible start for McLaren because Lando Norris was also caught up in that, and he's right at the back of the field, as is Alex Albon. Very busy opening lap in the Russian Grand Prix. The safety car is deployed, so the field will be neutralised and hopefully we'll be going racing again in about five minutes' time, I would uh, anticipate. And we have full commentary, Nick, over on Five Live Sports Extra. Bottas 
Bottas. Oh, he got Here racy. He, he got racy. Tried to send it around the outside and then just couldn't quite keep it there with Hamilton. But he's now got up into second place and he's sitting fairly pretty at the moment with the better tyre strategy behind Hamilton. So that is going to be interesting. It looked as though Sainz sort of crashed into the polystyrene board upon his rejoining the circuit. When he went wide at turn two, you have to go through the little polystyrene chicane. And it looks as though that is what he hit when he kind of speared back onto the track. Stroll seemed to just lose it all by himself on the exit of turn four, not in a dissimilar way to Sebastian Vettel yesterday. Vettel in all of that lost a lot of places. Russell, Albon and Norris have all come into the pits. So the order is Hamilton leading, Bottas second, Verstappen third, back in front of the Renaults that he lost out to initially. Ocon is now ahead of Daniel Ricciardo as well in all of that. Uh, Perez is sixth, seventh is Gasly, eighth is Leclerc. The two Haas drivers made an incredible start and Magnussen is ninth and Grosjean is tenth. Uh, Kafiat's in 11th still, somehow, on the hard tyre. Despite everybody swapping positions around him, he's still in 11th. Giovinazzi, 12th. Vettel, 13th. Latifi, 14th. Raikkonen, Russell, Albon, Norris. The 18 drivers still running. Sainz out of the Grand Prix. Stroll out of the Grand Prix. Nine places gained for Kevin Magnussen. 18th <laughs> up to 9th position. That must have felt incredible for him, weaving his way through the mess of midfielders that were strewn across the track through the first sector. Let's have a look then. We're going to re a replay now of what happened initially to the McLarens. And uh, they both ended up tumbling down the order and Sainz ending up in the wall for good measure. And they, Sainz is already dropping back on the way into turn two. Then he's got Lance Stroll coming up his inside. He goes in pretty hot into turn two on the break. Stroll's on his inside still. And Sainz cuts across the track. Then he goes through the polystyrene and he goes out of our shot. So we won't see it from that. But... I don't know if he actually needed to go through the polystyrene at uh, uh, that point, the uh, the bollards that you've got to go through. If you go wide on the exit of turn two, he was very close to making it. Bottas went to the outside of Hamilton and oh so nearly pulled off a really, really nice move on the medium tyre. Verstappen almost looked like he decided to do that move already as soon as he went in a bit deep. Well, he had Ricardo on his inside and Ricardo was fast starting on a soft tyre and uh, and was up the inside of Verstappen. So he had to go in deep to defend and then he couldn't turn in when he went in deep. So he had to cut across the corner. I was quite impressed with this start from Valtteri Bottas. Out breaking Lewis Hamilton on the medium tyres, Hamilton on the soft. And he just about kept this car on the track on the exit of turn two as well. Not quite taking the place, but a very valiant effort from Bottas. Something we haven't seen enough of this year, but got his elbows out pretty well, I have to say, in, uh, at this start. Now we'll get about, oh, Sainz has hit the wall on his own, going through the, uh, the bollards. He's hit the wall, too much power through, effectively, a corner there. So he's gone off wide, then he goes through the bollards, and then, oh, oh wow, that's a really just powered into the wall effectively the the, the bollards are there to slow you down and science didn't slow down enough and well, he did, whacked it he almost didn't have enough angle when verstappen went through that gap he was coming from a much sort of wider position science sort of at the last minute realized he needed to go through the polystyrene but was just taking too much speed we're getting a replay now on board with vettel and uh, he gets out of the throttle, and that's why he loses a couple of places. But then, where does... And he came on right in front of Norris. I think he came yeah. on right in front of his teammate as well. And uh, that must be what slowed Norris down to, to the back of the field, is spinning out of control teammate on two wheels. Here's Stroll. I just got hit. OK, yes. Stroll says he got hit. We're getting the replay on board with him now as he comes through turn three. And Stroll's made a good start. He's up behind his teammate. Stroll started 12. Perez started fifth. So he's had a great start, Lance Stroll. Watching the, the fight at the front between Verstappen and the Renaults already. Oh, he Ooh. does. He gets a whack from someone. Exit of turn four. So he didn't just lose it on his own. It looked like that from the outside shot. But it was suddenly a bit of a whack from whoever was behind him, which... Maybe it have been Albon. Yeah, if he then pitted, then that may well explain that. Uh, why Albon came into the pits. We're getting, and this is another replay with Sainz. Oh, the Sainz one is such a 
sorry. It's such a poor error, I have to say, from Sainz. He's, he's watching Verstappen also went wide and went through the polystyrene bollards. But Verstappen, as you said, he had the angle to go through it. So Sainz saw him not really slow down, also didn't really slow down. And uh, then had basically a much bigger angle, a proper corner to do going through it, and just didn't slow down, never, didn't even get close to making it through. Whack the left front, whack the left rear, out of control all by himself. Not a sensible one, that, from Carlos Sainz. When you go through, the bollards are there to slow you down and, and try and rejoin the track safely, but going flat out through them, whacking the wall, and then rejoining on two wheels, spinning across the track, is not the, uh, the safety measure the FIA were... <laughs> We're meaning by putting them there. Oh, indeed. So, safety car deployed. Hamilton leading, Bottas second, Verstappen third. Jenny. Yeah, just speaking to the teams, what a mess that was. Uh, so, um, they are pretty sure down at Racing Point that it was Leclerc who hit Stroll, and that's what made Lance Stroll have the spin. Uh, Albon didn't have a puncture when he came in. It was purely strategy. The drivers that came in, Norris, Albon and Russell. Yeah, but something's definitely not right. It keeps changing, like it, the steering goes really light to really heavy when I'm turning right. Okay, so Matt, that's Lando Norris complaining of a problem. Uh, okay, so Russell Albon then doing it for strategic reasons, which makes sense, to be fair. Albon had started 15th on the grid. He's now only 17th, but on a different strategy and doesn't need to... Uh, um, well, it doesn't need to pit again, but I don't know if he'll be able to get to the end on the hards, but he's doing something a little bit different, Jenny. Yeah, just speaking to the engineers before this race, they did say if there was an early safety car, which was a high probability, 70% probability, now it's 100% happened, it could potentially come in, switch onto the hard and try and get to the end of this race, which is a possibility because degradation is really low here. So and depending on how long they spend behind the safety car, that'll also help because this is a fuel sensitive track as well. So you're limited by that. You're limited by the tyres if you start on the soft. So this is all good news at the moment for Lewis Hamilton. It is, uh, it is normally on the edge on, uh, on fuel consumption this circuit, but the safety car period is quite lengthy here onto lap four, and uh, that will now no longer be a concern. I am concerned for Lando Norris. Having a steering weight changing as you're going around is, uh, is quite clearly not a normal thing to do. It's not only uh, unsettling as a driver, you lose performance, but it's indicative of a bigger problem going on. We're getting a replay of the start with Lando Norris. So what happened to him getting caught up? The science didn't get a good start full stop. Actually, neither did not. Magnus had just got a rocket ship start, and uh, he was making places before all of the chaos. I think that was Gasly that you were looking at. Uh, yeah, you're right. Magnus was, was even a rocket start for Magnus, and I don't know if he would have jumped up into the top five off the line. So, oh, so Norris is... Uh, uh, check the car. I ran over a lot of debris had to avoid Carlos. So Norris just sort of, nothing quite worked out for him at that start. I, it was a really odd start. Yeah. He was very, very slow on the apex of turn two, then was maybe watching Carlos Sainz. But in watching Carlos Sainz, saw everyone else fly past him, really. He was super careful, did run over a lot of debris. So did many other drivers, but they kept their foot in. And Norris was super, super cautious and just handed everyone a position, really, coming out of turn two. A, a slightly bizarre one for Lando Norris, and he's dropped to the back, not happy with his car. He did lump the kerb, exit of turn two, and uh, maybe that could be uh, a cause of some problems. A hydraulic leak or something might be uh, what would give you some intermittent power steering, and it would mean he wouldn't finish the race if that was the case. So, lap four of 53, still behind the safety car. We'll have the whole safety car restart to come as well, although it is, it won't be anything like Mugello because uh, the, the, the start line is right on the exit of the, of the final corner, basically. So that means that Lewis Hamilton won't have a choice, but to slipstream Valtteri Bottas, to give Valtteri Bottas the toe all the way down to turn two. So let's see, Bottas has got another chance, to, if he gets a good restart here, to attack Hamilton once again. Jenny. Yeah, just speaking to McLaren. So they have got damage on Lando Norris's car. They're just trying to investigate it now, although he's still going round. So that's never an easy thing. And um, it was also a slow pit stop. The rear left was a problem for them to try and get their hard tyre back on the car. But they're looking at the steering currently to try and work out what they can do, if they can do anything to help him. 
Charles Leclerc got away with it, really, but when he uh, had the collision with Lance Stroll, because it was it was very much wheel to wheel. For, uh, for me, that's a pretty standard racing incident. I, I would put the blame pretty squarely on Charles Leclerc for that one, I have to say. Just the left front in a bit deep, tangling with the right rear of Lance Stroll. These things do happen on the first lap of a Grand Prix, but I don't really blame Stroll for that one, I have to say. That one's on Leclerc. But is that a penalty for Leclerc, is my question? Uh, it's a first lap. These things happen. That's what I mean by sort of racing incident, really. But uh, safety car coming in this lap, then. Lap 5 of 53, Hamilton leading, Bottas second, Verstappen third, Ocon fourth, Ricardo fifth, Perez, Gasly, Leclerc, Magnussen, Grosjean on the top 10, Kafiat, Giovinazzi, Vettel, Latifi, Raikkonen in the top 15, Russell, Albon and Norris, the 18 drivers still running, Sainz and Stroll both out of the race. So, safety car coming in this lap. When will Hamilton choose to go? I have to say, that's a very early safety car ending, Messi. <laughs> Halfway through the middle sector, way earlier than we had even in Mugello, where the message was early enough. This time we've got it almost at the end of the first sector in the Sochi. Hamilton's got loads of time, but the light's still on, so he can't drop back just yet, but he's got plenty of time as they come around the end of sector two into turn 13. So we'll see when the safety car lights go out then. There they go. Uh, coming down into turn 13 but borderline too early and but of course the FIA will claim that they did nothing wrong in Mugello and the safety car lights always go out at the very final corner but now they've done it with about six corners to go exactly they've it's... gone like the absolute opposite of, of what they do now Hamilton drops back he's got loads and loads of time to play with he can let the safety car go and he's still got to negotiate five more corners now four as he comes around turn 14. Verstappen weaving hard. This is an opportunity for both Verstappen and Bottas. So Hamilton coming through 15 and 16. Was that him going? Yes, it was. So halfway through turn 15, Hamilton gets on the gas and he's got a reasonable restart here. Coming through the final two corners and out over the start, finish straight. Bottas is not that close. In fact, Verstappen is closer to Bottas than Bottas is to Hamilton as they come across the line. Six tenths of a second from Bottas back to Verstappen. But I think Hamilton has got a pretty decent restart here. As they come down, there's a start finish straight again, racing back underway. Leclerc looking the most racy, right up behind Pierre Gasly. But Hamilton it is who leads the way, manages to keep the lead on the restart. Everybody else filtering through and uh, no overtakes going on down into the second corner. Antonio Giovinazzi also made a good start up into 12th spot from much further back. But what can happen now with Hamilton? He's on the soft tyres. He's got to keep them going for a long time. He's still under investigation for that practice start. Still no word on any uh, penalty or non-penalty there. But Hamilton leading, Bottas second, Verstappen third, Ocon fourth, Ricardo fifth, Perez, Gasly the top seven. And in those top seven, it's just Bottas and Verstappen in second and third that are on the medium compound tyre. Hamilton's investigation has now been the best part of 45 minutes. Yeah. I mean, surely he's either broken the rules or not, and then it's just applying the penalty that should be in the, uh, in the rule book or in what the FIA, the stewards decide. I don't know why they're still under investigation. It's quite confusing right now for the Grand Prix because if he has a penalty, it will completely change the dynamics. As it is, he's just got to measure this pace, Lewis Hamilton. He's on the, the soft tyre. That's his weakness right now. Track position is his strength and he's just got to keep it. Keep the tyres alive because if they go, that's going to hand the initiative to Bottas and Verstappen potentially. Jenny. Yeah, just listening across to Lando Norris's um, McLaren team radio, and they're just saying, just build confidence in the steering. This is pretty much you, what you've got now for the rest of the race. So don't go crazy. Don't try and set any hot laps. Just go steady and, and learn about the car. Well, he's just passed a Red Bull, so that's not going too steady. He's got past Alex Albon on this first lap. So uh, I don't know where that happened, but Norris was plumb last in 18th place. And on that safety car restart, he's got ahead of Alex Albon. Two good mates, Norris and Albon, fighting in fast cars, but at the back, they've got to charge their way through on those hard tyres. And uh, next on their list is George Russell, who they're mates with as well. We're getting a replay of what happened, and we just got good drive coming out of uh, 10. Mistake for Albon. He went in too hot and uh, had a lot of turning, cornering to do on the exit of 10. Lost all momentum. Then he had good, good straight line speed for Albon. Actually managed to get ahead again into uh, turn 13, but didn't shut the door so Norris still had the inside and completed the pass 
after already making it, and they're not. Right, five second time penalty for Lewis Hamilton. Wow. Okay, so Hamilton, when he serves his pit stop, will also have to serve a five second penalty from the lead of the Grand Prix. So that is going to harm him a lot. It means that he will pretty much lose the lead of the Grand Prix at the pit stops, whatever happens. Yeah. And how does he come back from that? I don't know. He's in a real difficult spot now on the soft tires with a five second penalty looming over him when he takes his pit stop. He's going to lose track position. Bottas has got to just stick within five seconds of Hamilton, which he should be able to because he's on the better tire. What, what about Verstappen? Verstappen's got to stick within that gap as well. And then Hamilton's going to be down to third, third place and with probably the longest stint to do. So Hamilton getting the penalty for... And I don't know why he didn't do a practice start at the start box, because he was queued up ready to do it and then didn't. So I don't, I don't know the, the reasoning for why he didn't do it there, but five second time penalty for the, a very small, you know, in, infraction, but them's the rules, you're not allowed to do it. It's a bizarre one. Why everyone else was queued up in the start box, Hamilton was part of that queue. Yeah. But then either did a practice start and then wanted another one quickly, so slowed on the, uh, on the end, exit of the pit lane, or didn't start initially and then wanted to start further down the road, but you can't do that, and, uh, and so that's the penalty. I believe on the radio he said there was a lot of rubber there, so could he do it somewhere else? Which I guess makes sense because you, there's, there's not much rubber on the actual grid start spots. Yeah, but the answer is no. Well, and no one else could do it somewhere else, so why should he? That is what a, a practice start box gets very rubbered in. Everyone does the same practice starts at the same point through the weekend. But Hamilton's no different from everyone else in, the, in terms of the rules. Daniel Kafiat sending it to the outside of Roman Grosjean and overtaking the Frenchman. The Russian moves up into 10th position. Lap 8 of 53. Hamilton leads and... Uh, well... And Hamilton has... So he's got two five-second time penalties. So he's got 10 seconds overall. Am I reading that right, Jenny? Yes, you absolutely are. He has two penalties, both of five seconds, for two violations of the practice start code. I will try and find out a little bit more. Um, but yeah, 10 second penalty is very painful for Hamilton. So he has one time penalty for the practice start and uh, another five second time penalty for a second illegal start. Serve them together, back to back. Is Verstappen. I have no real grip, it's insane. Verstappen saying he's got no rear grip, lying in third position. So overall, Andrew Benson, BBC's chief F1 writer, 10 second time penalty for Hamilton. That's, I mean, five seconds was big, 10 seconds is huge. Uh, yeah, the 91st victory is not coming today, I don't think, is it, Looking, but judging by that. So just to clarify what happened, I was listening across to the radio. Hamilton said, there's a lot of rubber down here, can I do the start somewhere else? And Peter Bonington, his race engineer, said A firm, which is their code for yes, obviously. Um, and there was a, another communication a little bit further down the pit lane. The point being, neither Hamilton nor Bonington have clearly read the race director's event notes because it's very clear in there, as you were saying earlier, Jack, mm -hmm. that you can't... You, for, I mean, there is some slight vagueness in, the, in, the, in what, they, what, they, what those notes say in terms of where exactly you do the start, but it's, later on it, it's very clear that you can't stop in the fast lane of the pit lane for any reason, and a practice start is not a justifiable reason. So they've, yeah, they've scored their own goal there, a quite significant one, I'm afraid. And that's, it's not a new rule for Sochi. It's been the, I think it's been a rule for years. It's always in the practice start box when you can't do it past the end of the, the pit wall unless there's special circumstances, which would be dictated by the race director before the Grand Prix. It's a really poor bit of teamwork, basically from Mercedes, from Hamilton not knowing that, and even asking that when he can see everyone else not doing, not doing what he wanted. But then from Pete Bonington, the race engineer, this is your job to be basically within the rules, saying what you can and can't do. And when Hamilton's asked, he's basically got it wrong there, Pete Bonington. And they've picked up a penalty. I have to say, I didn't see that it was two penalties, but if it is, then yeah, he's, he's done really in this Grand Prix, unless he can have some miraculous drive 
to uh, to make it work. Tanya Smith says the Netflix curse strikes again uh, for Mercedes. They're being followed by Netflix here for the next series of Drive to Survive. And Lewis, we have a 10 second time penalty for those start infringements. What happened? What happened? Sorry, Lucy. So, yes, uh, those starts going to the grid got a five second penalty for each out of position. Yeah. Where is that in the rule book? Article 19.2, unfortunately. And he did it twice then. So, that's it. So, 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 I think he's done. Because someone, yeah, he's gone out of the pits twice and done it the same it both times. Yeah. yeah. There so, we go. That's, that's what we've got. To the bottom up because I did see when I saw a replay of one of the starts and it looked as though there was rubber down so I thought well maybe someone else has done one there already but that was Hamilton doing it twice yeah and when Hamilton's saying where's that in the rule book do you do you think Hamilton's read the rule book all the way through well he clearly hasn't <laughs> but drivers don't yeah. read the rule book no. you you know the rules you learn the rules but you don't sift through the rule book on on the plane to Sochi so lap 11 and 53, and we are going to do an update into Five Live in a moment as... Uh We're on lap 11 of 53 at the moment. Lewis Hamilton is leading the Grand Prix. He managed to hold the lead off the start. There was a safety car for a big crash for Carlos Sainz and also for Lance Stroll. But Hamilton has been given a 10 second time penalty. He did practice starts where he wasn't allowed to do them. No one else did them on the track. Hamilton basically did, and he did it twice. He's got a five second time penalty for both. So he's leading the race, but he'll have to wait 10 seconds in the pits as a penalty for an illegal practice start. So uh, as you say, full commentary on five live sports extra the the other thing that people are pointing out lap 11 of 53 we've just seen some good racing actually uh, russell is ahead of albert is ahead of norris and russell is holding on to that position at the moment but he's on eight penalty points lewis hamilton two five second time penalties you get 12 penalty points you get a race ban could he get license points for, for, for these infringements as well? No um, news on those things yet, but that's why I was, uh, I was also curious whether he got any for yesterday when he was under investigation for, going over, for not going through the, the polystyrene chicane, but he didn't, so that's fine. But yeah, he could end up with a race ban for Germany. He, he won't. <laughs> Agreed. Norm I have to say, normally you'd be stuck with a couple of penalty points for these sort of things. Yeah. But he won't get two times two <laughs> penalty points. No chance. It'll be it probably be a, a one penalty point thing, and he'll, he'll go up to ten or something. And it will be a bit sketchy heading to Germany, not to cause a collision or start from the wrong place or do anything different. Just getting a replay of uh, Norris had actually got in front of. George Russell in the Williams, but then Russell just breezed back past him. Albon breezed back past Norris as well. So Norris really, well, he didn't have DRS. The other two did. So they were able to just kind of scamper back past him. Three very good mates. Young Brits, although Alex Albon races under the Thai flag, and they're still behind George Russell in the Williams. So, And they're all on hard tyres. The three of them racing the position at the back of the field, 16th, 17th and 18th, having a good scrap and still behind Nicholas Latifi. Start closing up the gap to Lewis. So Bottas is told to start closing up the gap to Lewis. The gap is only 1.5 seconds at the moment. Hamilton on the softs, Bottas on the mediums. I have to say, the penalty is the penalty and, and them's the rules, but it has somewhat killed the intrigue of this Grand Prix yeah. because Hamilton on the soft tyres what he could do with Bottas and Verstappen on the mediums was, uh, oh, Russell's locked up down at 13. That was the little squeal of tyres you could hear. And, Ru and Alvin goes round the outside of him at turn 14. So that's one place lost for Russell in the Williams. It's also going to be a tough rest of the Grand Prix for the Williams driver because he may well be planning on going to the end on those hard tyres. Lap 13 of 53, Hamilton leading, but a 10 second time penalty to come. 1.2 seconds clear of Bottas, Verstappen there in third, Ocon fourth, Ricardo fifth, Perez, Gasly, Leclerc, Magnussen and Kafiat, Jenny Gao, the rest of the 
the top ten. Yeah, and the pit window has just opened for those drivers starting on the soft tyres, so that might have been for the hurry up for Bottas to, uh, to try and close the gap to Hamilton. We would expect Hamilton to come in sometime within the next four or five laps. Of course, he'll have to serve that 10-second time penalty as well. It's a long and slow pit lane here, so expect him to take about oh, 40 seconds in the pit lane, potentially. He's got to try and get a big enough gap to Esteban Ocon in fourth place because then at least he'll emerge after taking 10 seconds, which it seems he can do all at once. With the people on his team, we've got a 10-second penalty. It seems it's not two five-second penalties he has to take. But he's got to build enough gap that he's not going to lose track position to Ocon, Ricardo, and Perez, who are right now are all within 10 seconds of Hamilton. So they're all on the same soft tyres as Hamilton. He hasn't got a, a tyre deficit to those guys. He's in a Mercedes, which is miles quicker in terms of pace. At the moment, that's the absolute least he's got to do, is bridge a gap to fourth place. And uh, no, so we're going to need to update up the pace. So suggesting tag three, because it won't be long. We need to clear cars out of our pit window. So and it won't be long. So let's just get on with it. So that's exactly what Jolien was just talking about. We need to clear the cars in our pit window, which is the Ocon Ricardo Perez gang. Although they too are on the soft tyres, so at least they it's a little bit less crucial. If they were on the mediums running long, then that would be that could be a real pain. No, well, it's still a pain because he's got the 10-second penalty. So oh, yeah, yeah, he, he's going to drop behind them. They are on the soft tyre, which gives Hamilton every chance to try and extend the gap. And last lap, he was six tenths quicker than Ocon. Maybe not enough, really. Six seconds the uh, the gap. Mercedes looked like they were getting ready in the, uh, in the pit lane which surely will only be for Lewis Hamilton, but I don't know why they'd take that, that penalty right now because he's going to drop in behind those three midfielders. Unless they want to get it out of the way in case of a safety car or something like that. I know we've had a safety car, but if you, you, you don't want to pit, you don't want to lose out. You, you want to get it out of the way in case there's then a safety car, is what, I, is what I'm trying to say. So if he can emerge in third position, a long way behind Bottas and Verstappen, then there's a safety car. Do not stop me, Ali. Do not. Well, yeah. Hamilton agrees with you. Yeah, don't, don't stop him and, and put him down into traffic. Mercedes, the, the mechanics already with the tyres, they look like they're primed for a pit stop, but Hamilton does not pit in this lap, and he can't afford now to drop in behind... Ocon, Ricardo, and Perez. Those guys are quick enough and they'll just slow him up more when the minimum he should have from this race is a podium and he's just set fastest lap of the race a full second quicker than his last flying lap. So now that lap, 1.8 seconds quicker than Ocon, he's on the march. Here comes Sergio Perez. Ocon is doing a very good job, actually. He's pulling a gap to Daniel Ricciardo. Ricciardo is now under attack from the racing point of Perez. The Mexican goes to the outside, but Ricciardo holds the place for the time being. This is a good drive today so far from Perez's former teammate, Esteban Ocon. Perez has got good drive through turn three. They go side by side through there. Ricardo on the dirty stuff on the outside. There was a big crash in Formula 2 earlier on today with uh, Jack Aitken and Luca Giotto at that corner. But Perez and Ricardo make it through no problem. And Perez is up in the fifth position. Nice move from Perez on the inside through the flat out turn three. And Ricardo got wide on that corner. It's a bit scary out there because no one drives on that part of the track. It's easy flat out, but when you get on all the marbles, the bits of discarded tyre and whatever else out there, it's uh, you could soon lose a load of grip and have a huge crash a la Roman Grosjean in 2015 as well in uh, the former guys of the Renault team. That was Lotus back then. But that one, nice move from Perez. Ricardo kept it on the track but lost the position. Perez looking quick. Remember he out-qualified the Renaults. He dropped back at the start, but now he's ahead of one of them and now can hunt down Esteban Ocon. All of that was good news for Lewis Hamilton because they've just slowed each other down and that's two of the three drivers that were within his pit window now just falling away. So it's just Ocon that Hamilton's got to worry about in terms of the gap to take his penalty. Ocon doing a very good job, the Frenchman, in uh, what is comfortably his best race performance of the season so far and Ricardo pits. Hamilton sets the fastest lap of the Grand Prix. So why, why would Mercedes be... Is it only this, that sort of safety car risk that would be why they'd want to bring him in early? Yeah, they want to clear the penalty before any possible safety car, but they need to be clearing these cars because they don't want to be 
going on to their tyre and uh, a hard tyre for Daniel Ricciardo. They don't want to be going on to that and having to fight their way through slower cars. Ricciardo is now going to have fresh tyres. That will probably force the pit stop of Perez again to try and hold that position if Racing Point possibly can. So, lap 16 of 53. Ricciardo back out onto circuit. The order is Hamilton, Bottas, Verstappen, Ocon, Perez, the top five. Gasly, Leclerc, Fiat, Magnussen, Grosjean, the top ten. With uh, Giovinazzi in 11th, Vettel 12th, Raikkonen 13th, 14th for Ricciardo, 15th for Latifi, Albon, Norris and Russell. The 18 drivers. Uh, Russell has just pitted again. So, obviously, that lock-up on the hards was maybe a little too much for him. And he has been in the pits and is down in 18th position, 30 seconds off the back of his teammate Nicholas Latifi, who has uh, just been passed by Alex Albon. And Lando Norris is the next driver that's going to try and pass him. And Ricardo has come out just in front of Albon and Norris. So interested to see what sort of pace they can do if they're able to, to stay with the Renault driver. Into the pits comes Lewis Hamilton, the race leader. Slows it down to 60 kilometers per hour. Comes through the right-hand turn and then pulls into his Mercedes uh, pit box and then waits for a long, long time. This will be a 10 second wait, which will feel like it is forever for Lewis Hamilton. Still, the team can't work on the car and then finally they get to work. They change the tires in two seconds and he's on the hards and out and away. So penalty served and Hamilton is gonna drop out just in the middle of everything. He's gonna drop to the fringes of the top 10 but crucially should be ahead of those that have uh, pitted or need to pit. So we will still emerge into traffic, but the likes of Daniel Ricciardo, who will go to the end now on the hard tyre, will be behind him. And Esteban Ocon, Perez, that, that bunch, will all be behind him when they pit. So he's, he'll have some overtaking to do at some point. Is, uh, is Ocon grabbing Renault's first podium? No. OK. This is just ridiculous, says Lewis Hamilton, and that's probably while he was sitting there with nothing to do. Yep, frustrating, but um, what can you say? The rules are the rules, and uh, he broke them. Bottas then leads the Grand Prix. The Mercedes driver has Max Verstappen in second place on the medium tyres as well, and then it's Ocon third, Perez fourth, Gasly fifth, Leclerc sixth, seventh for... Uh, Daniel Kofiat, we're just getting a replay of Lando Norris making a move on Nicholas Latifi down into turn 13. And so he and Albon are now clear of the Williams driver who is not able really to, to be in the mix with the uh, other back markers at the moment. Bottas sets the fastest lap of the race. Sergio Perez on that last lap was a second quicker than uh, Esteban Ocon in third spot. So Perez uh, having some good form at the moment, Jenny. Yeah, and he'll be really keen to try and assert just how good he is at the moment because in that Racing Point team, if you remember Magello, there's some team radio. Why did you have to serve it? Why does it just not add on at the end of the race? Yeah, Lewis, we have to serve it when we change the tyres, but let's just focus. How far have I dropped back now? We're currently down to P11. But that just shows that he doesn't know the rules because that is always the rule. If you get a penalty, but you take it at the next pit stop, and if there's no more pit stops, you take it at the end of the race. That's been the rules for like four years. But you said you never read the rules when you were an F1 driver, so no, I didn't read the <laughs> I didn't read the rules, but I at least knew the rules mostly. I don't know every single article of it of it all, but that's a pretty fundamental when you take a five second time penalty. It shows yeah. he probably hasn't had many in the past. Well, that is true. Jenny, do continue. Yes, yeah, sorry. So Sergio Perez looking to impress this weekend. Remember, he's without a race seat, although we hear that there are plans in the process. But last time out in Mugello, it was Lance Stroll who'd had a mega crash, and that meant the update that they were planning to put on Perez's car this weekend, they couldn't do. The new update went back onto Lance Stroll's car, and now he's had another crash. The upgrade plan for Germany for Perez is likely to go onto Stroll's car again. So Perez can't get any luck, so I think it would be great for him if he can get something out of this race. I would, I would argue that Stroll can't get any luck either, having a puncture while running well at Mugello and slamming into the barriers and also getting knocked out by Charles Leclerc at the start of this Grand Prix. 
Ocon's having a storm and he's right up behind. Oh, sorry, Perez having a storm and he's right up behind Ocon, who pits. Yeah, he was a second a lap quicker, pretty much, compared to uh, Esteban Ocon. So he, the Renault has now come into the pit lane. We'll see where he emerges compared to Ricardo. Uh, Hamilton, meanwhile, is on the back of Vettel as they battle over ninth place. Yeah, you asked me about Ocon taking that Renault first place. Oh, yeah. I didn't mean to be quite as blunt as I was, but he's basically in a net, a net fourth place still. He should emerge here behind Lewis Hamilton. Ocon coming down the end of the pits. Hamilton has taken his 10 second penalty. He's now tucked in behind Sebastian Vettel of all people coming down the uh, the main straight. And he will sweep around uh, Esteban Ocon. So Ocon's still in a net fourth by the time everyone else ahead takes their, uh, takes their pit stop. But even then, Ocon's got his own fight with Sergio Perez, who's, who's driving very, very quickly. And now Hamilton in a net third. Now, well, we'll wait, we'll wait and see what happens, of course, over the... <laughs> what a ridiculous thing to say. I'm not just going to stop commentating now. Of course, we'll get to the end of the Grand Prix and see what happens. But what Hamilton's pace is going to be... Because you wouldn't be... The, the, the issue for Hamilton is that offset tyre strategy where he was starting on the softs because you think if he was on the same strategy as Bottas, could he beat Bottas in a Grand Prix by 10 seconds? You'd say, yeah. yeah. But it's with that starting on the soft tyre that makes it so difficult. Don't forget, he out-qualified both Bottas and Verstappen by half a second mm. yesterday. He's got the pace in the car. The problem is the tyres, and Bottas has just done the fastest lap of the race, the, uh, the previous lap. Bottas himself has now got five seconds to Verstappen. They've only got 10 seconds back to Sergio Perez, who is having a, a real storm and still on the soft tyre, Sergio Perez. But Hamilton is, he, he's got, I don't see how he can win this Grand Prix without another safety car or another shake-up later on because he's, he's got a huge deficit to his teammate and to Max Verstappen, who are going to emerge from the pits in normal situation on better tyres with the with with the advantage in terms of track position as well so Hamilton's going to be in third after this all shakes up and he's going to be on sort of four five maybe more laps older tires Jenny yeah, just to give you an update from Carlos Sainz, had that big crash at the beginning of the race which brought out the safety car. He had to go to the medical centre, but the team at McLaren say he's OK. He's back in the paddock with them. OK, so that's uh, good news for him. Daniel Ricciardo has just made a move on Kimi Raikkonen to uh, get up into ninth position. Ocon coming up now to the back of Sebastian Vettel, who Hamilton passed with relative ease. And... Bottas still leading, 5.5 seconds clear of Max Verstappen and looking like he's going to do the fastest lap of the Grand Prix this time around for Valtteri Bottas. As you say, Perez doing a really good job on the soft tyres to keep them, if anyone can keep a set of soft tyres going, it's Sergio Perez. Just getting a replay of Ricardo passing Kimi Raikkonen fairly straightforwardly. So we'll see what uh, whether Perez can go longer and then maybe get ahead of both of the Renaults. He was ahead of one of them already, but uh, getting past the other, Esteban Ocon, looked imminent before Ocon then came into the pits. And Ocon, meanwhile, in all of this, is losing time up behind Sebastian Vettel. The same is true of Daniel Ricciardo in the other Renault. They're having to sort of fight their way through backmarkers that have yet to make a pit stop, whereas Perez is in clear air and is now in the pits. So here we go, the racing point team get to work. Can they leapfrog Esteban Ocon in the pit lane here? Leclerc goes up into third position but is yet to stop. On go a set of hard tyres for Sergio Perez. Very neat pit stop. 2.6 seconds for Racing Point. And he's going to emerge onto the circuit. It's going to be tight here with Ocon and I don't think he's going to... Oh, it's going to be actually really tight. He might just about do it here. Coming down towards turn two, he might drop behind Vettel, but I think Perez has got ahead of both of the Renaults in the pit stop sequence. So really good stuff from the racing point. And Perez now in a net fourth place. Ocon was very close to passing Vettel on the last lap, but couldn't make it stick at turn two. And that has cost him the place of the net fourth place that he held earlier on. And still he's behind Vettel. And Perez crucially emerged just a few tenths ahead of Vettel. There they go, all three flashing through the apex of turn four. And Ocon still behind Sebastian Vettel in the Ferrari, which is a slow car this year. Vettel only uh, just made Q2 actually yesterday. And he's holding Ocon up right now as Perez has critically got the track position having made that pit stop. So the overcut working, not for the first time here around Sochi, the degradation's low track position's key and actually when you pit and go onto a set of hard tyres it's not easy to fire them up straight away either so Ocon struggling in that 
that phase, just a few laps around the pit stop phase, and it's really cost him in terms of track position, mainly to Sergio Perez. So that 22 of 53. Bottas leading, 6.6 .6 seconds ahead of Max Verstappen. Charles Leclerc is in third, Daniel Kafiat fourth. Hamilton, so he's 38 seconds off the lead of the Grand Prix, Bottas. 25 seconds for a pit stop, so he's essentially 13 seconds back from Bottas as it, as it stands once Bottas has made his pit stop. And he's a second quick, second slower on the last lap. No traffic for Hamilton. He's got 10 seconds to Daniel Kvyat now ahead. And he's just a second slower than Bottas, who's pumped in the fastest after the race by miles. Bottas is second quicker than Verstappen. Lap 22 of 53, and Valtteri Bottas is leading the Grand Prix. He's seven seconds clear of Max Verstappen. Neither of those two have made their pit stop yet. Lewis Hamilton has, and at that pit stop, had to serve a 10-second time penalty for doing an illegal practice start on the way to the grid. So Hamilton, he's running fifth at the moment. He's in a net third position overall, but he's got a long afternoon if he wants to get close to Verstappen and Bottas, who are going to battle it out for the lead. As you say, full commentary on Five Live Sports Extra. So Leclerc third, ahead of Daniel Kafiat in fourth, Hamilton in fifth, Perez in sixth, Vettel in seventh, eighth is Ocon, ninth Ricardo, tenth for Raikkonen. Uh, Albon's now got up ahead of Gasly and is on the back of uh, Raikkonen. Now, if Albon can get to the end of the Grand Prix on these tyres, he's looking like he might be able to get a sort of decent top ten points haul, but it just depends on what he can do with the pace. Gasly 12th. Norris 13th, Magnussen 14th, 15th, Grosjean, Giovinazzi, Latifi and Russell, uh, the top 18. I don't quite know how Russell is now on the back of Latifi again, 3.8 seconds behind them, but Russell made an extra pit stop. Well, Latifi pitted. Agreed, but uh, Russell pitted off those hards onto the mediums after he had that big flat spot lockup when I thought he was quite away behind. But yeah, he pitted and Latifi pitted. Russell, remember, had that one, the first stop was a free pit stop under the safety car. Oh, so course. then they were basically racing and they both since the safety car had one pit stop. So Russell is uh, on the mediums now, just behind Latifi. They've both had the pit stop since Russell's block up. Okay, there we go then. Uh, we have got, we are on lap 23 of 53. A little look to the inside there from Pierre Gasly, who's now looking quite racy up behind Alex Albon for uh, for that 11th place. So Albon's taken a load of places by virtue of having the pit stop under the safety car, and everyone else has had to have one since, basically. They kept track position early on. Albon lost it all to take a pit stop, but now he's on quite old tyres compared to the likes of Pierre Gasly and the Alpha Tauri in 12th position, looking at the back of the car he used to drive, the Red Bull driven by Alex Albon and they're just on the fringe of the top 10 which will be they will be scoring points at this rate because there's still Kimi Raikkonen in 10th place who's yet to pit Sebastian Vettel's in 7th further up the road but not by much by about 6 seconds in the Ferrari he's yet to pit as well so these places will shake out for the points Daniel Kvyat's one to watch in terms of the midfield battle starting on that hard tyre from 11th place he's now running 4th just behind Charles Leclerc, and he could go a long way into this race. He's just done his personal best lap of the Grand Prix. He's done two personal bests in a row, and uh, if he can go a long way, he could have a nice attacking drive later on. Well, you stopped so early, I have to manage now. I struggle to make it to the end. Uh, just happened, 39-9. Uh, I don't want him for any more, but it doesn't make any difference. Hamilton then, I mean, it, he's kind of right in that it doesn't make any difference. And I think Hamilton has to take some of the blame, but I think Pete Bonington will be feeling a little foolish in, in all of this because he, you know, he confirmed to Hamilton that he could do the, the start wherever he wanted. Certainly the race engineer has to take the, the brunt of the blame for that, I think. There's the, the drivers don't know the rules inside out as we can clearly see but the race engineers they should be knowing them a lot better and when Hamilton asks if he can do that Pete Bonington saying hey firm you can is just lining him up for those five second penalties and two of them so 
Hamilton's kind of right. The time to the to the leaders doesn't make a difference now. He's 40 seconds behind Valtteri Bottas. He's going to come out 20 seconds off behind his teammate. Bottas will have the fresher tyres. Verstappen's going to be up the road by miles as well. This is going to be a lonely old drive for Lewis Hamilton to the line in third place, unless he gets a safety car, in which case that will bring him back in. Monza. Big mistake. Cost Hamilton the win from the from the pit wall. Yeah. Similar scenario. Not again. Not meaning to sort of jump on the slamming Pete Bonington sort of bandwagon. Uh, not that there is a bandwagon, but you know what I mean. But just as sort of a question, I suppose. You're trying to start the bandwagon. Well, that's kind of what I'm not trying to do. We can go on this tire, the more that protects us from safety cars. So the longer we can go on this tire, the more that protects us from safety cars is the message to Valtteri Bottas. Bottas is cruising in this Grand Prix right now. Every lap he's doing is a long way quicker than Verstappen in second place. The last lap was 1.4 seconds quicker than Verstappen. He's miles quicker than anyone. Oh, Ricardo with a big move around the outside of his teammate Esteban Ocon at turn two. I don't think he stopped the car in time to properly make the corner. He's taken the place. Good fighting between the two Renaults. That was a brave move from Ricardo. Yeah, so Daniel Ricardo back up ahead of Ocon into eighth position, which is going to be a net fifth place once the pit stops shake out and I was saying earlier on what a good job Ocon was doing he was pulling away from Ricardo uh, Ricardo then came into pit and what was what what happened with Ocon there that was an odd one did he did he let he seemed to just be stopped on the inside of the track oh did he have a dash problem no I think he maybe let Ricardo through actually but Ricardo then smoked it in super hot and actually didn't properly make the corner. So, in, Verstappen's coming into the pits. Let's see this one through for second place. The Red Bull, that's a very, very quick pit stop for Red Bull. Verstappen switches from his medium tyres onto a hard set of tyres. 1.9 seconds. Wow. Super quick. You want those pit stops when it really counts. And this one doesn't for Max. He was 10 <laughs> seconds off the race lead. He's going to be comfortably ahead of Lewis Hamilton. But very impressive work from the Red Bull pit crew. It's going to come out side by side with Daniel Kvyat. Kvyat, who has yet to pit and is now running in third position at, uh, at his home race, which will please the fans. But was that Ricardo overtake then? All four wheels off. It was. And that's what I don't understand. Uh, technically, that's an overtake off, off the track. Well, Ocon was letting him through, but Ricardo still smoked it in super deep on the brakes and, uh, and ended up going off the track. And that has now been noted and his last lap time was deleted. So if the stewards deemed that the overtake was in the corner, yeah. You know, that, he's handed himself a potential penalty with that one. I don't know if they might see that he didn't really gain a big advantage and he was already passed before the corner and Ocon was actually trying to get out of the way. Ultimately, the actual going off the track is kind of irrelevant in terms of the overtake because Ocon was letting him through. But yeah, Ricardo there just committed coming into the corner when he perhaps didn't need to be quite so on the edge. In comes Bottas. Race leader then into the pit lane for the Mercedes team. A nice clean pit stop and he'll emerge comfortably in the lead of the Grand Prix. Holden goes the set of hard tyres, away he goes and it's a 2.7 second pit stop for Valtteri Bottas and he will emerge comfortably in the lead of the uh, Grand Prix. Well, uh, yes, he will emerge in the lead of the Grand Prix still, won't he? Um, just wondered if uh, Leclerc was going to jump in but he was nowhere near. So Bottas emerges in the lead of the race. for Verstappen, uh, well Leclerc in second at the moment, Kvyat third, for Verstappen fourth but Leclerc and Kvyat yet to pit. Hamilton in fifth place, Perez, Vettel, Ricardo, Ocon, Raikkonen in the top ten, Albon 11th, Gasly's in 12th, Lando Norris, Jenny running in 13th place at the moment. Yeah, he's not having a great day. He was involved and tagged right at the beginning of this race and his steering's not right. He's complaining of oversteer at every corner. And just to let you know, lots of people looking at Daniel Kvyat's hard tyres just to see how far they can go. How many laps will the people that went on to hard tyres at the beginning of this race be able to get out of their car? Ricardo is now under investigation for not following the race director's instructions. I, he's gone wide at, uh, at the right-hander, and he's actually sending one up the inside of Vettel right now. The two go side by side, wheel to wheel. Ricardo out onto the outside of the circuit as they come through the left-hander of turn three. Vettel holding the place at the moment. Even though he hasn't made a pit stop, he's still fighting quite hard, costing himself lap time you know, overall, and it's allowing Ocon onto the back of Ricardo. Not able to get through up into turn four, but he should have a chance coming into turn 13. I don't, I don't really understand this. Like, Ricardo couldn't at the last minute swerve to the left 
to then go through those polystyrene gates. He, you know, he was like one wheel off the track. It's a bit weird, that whole. It's the same with Kafia. Um, sorry, Magnus's penalty last year. It's that same kind of scenario. Yeah, it's a really silly runoff area down at turn two. Every year across Formula 2, Formula 3 or something, we see accidents there at the start. And Ricardo's got himself a potential penalty by not following the notes. He has made a nice move on uh, Sebastian Vettel, though. Down into turn 13 with the DRS on the uh, straight and then just made it stick around the outside on the braking past Vettel. It, w it was... He was very committed to trying to pass Arcon, who was not at all committed to keeping him behind. But um, we need to see another replay of exactly what he what he did. He went off the track, but he didn't really go far off the track at all. He almost kept himself within track limits. It was super tight. Yeah. It wasn't like he went straight off at turn two and then was nowhere near making it stick and then just bombed it on this, the shortest route. And he's been given a time penalty. Five second time penalty, Daniel Ricciardo. That one feels stupid, that penalty, I think. Ocon is going past Vettel now as well. Hopefully we'll get a, a replay of it, but I don't know what, I honestly don't know what the, what the drivers are meant to do at that point. Like if you go straight on at turn two, then fair enough. But when it's at the apex of that, of the little left kink at the start of three, then what, the, the, what you're meant to do is basically what Science did, take a super narrow angle into the corner and ended up in the wall. Exactly, exactly that, really. It wasn't like he went straight on at, at the, on the braking zone. He turned into the corner, but just got a little bit wide, and then was kind of there at the, ape, yeah. at the, the apex of the little switchback kink. We get another shot of it now. So Ocon lets him through. Ricardo locks up. I mean, he's That's just a nonsense. He's inches from staying on the track, and instead the FIA wanted to turn left and drive through the bit where. He's not, got, he's not gained any time by that. And the FA wanted to turn left and go through those bollards on a dusty, not used part of the, the concrete on the outside where signs were at the wall earlier on. It is, they are the rules, but that just seems a nonsense. Even if they'd have done him for overtaking all four wheels off the track, I'd have said, OK, Fine, harsh one because they were swapping position. It wasn't a real well, overtake. That, probably still cut. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What was the What was the thing that happened with Stroll in Austria though? Didn't he not get a penalty for that or something? Yeah, for passing Ricardo and yeah. <laughs> sending them both miles off the track. Yeah, that was it. Uh, so Leclerc has emerged in front of Esteban Ocon here in the Ferrari. Charles Leclerc has managed to split the Renaults which is a decent effort from, from the Ferrari driver. Cracking drive this is from Leclerc. Fifth off Lance Stroll on lap one, survived to tell the tale, and now he's up in seventh place. Daniel Kvyat is still ahead, and I'll tell you what, Kvyat's having a really good drive as well, and he's gonna score some good points. He's gonna emerge not far away from this battle when he does pit, and he's gonna be on some soft tires at the end of the Grand Prix and very racy. But Leclerc now is ahead of Ocon. Ricardo has a penalty, so he's effectively ahead of Ricardo. He's effectively ahead of Kibia. He's in a net fifth place right now, and he's uh, he's on the freshest tyres of everyone. Just looking at that Renault incident again, why, if you're telling your drivers to switch places, why do it at a point when it's really inconvenient for the drivers and could lead to a mistake like that? Surely Renault, you have to question the call. No. is the, That's the best place to, to let them through, isn't it? On the main straight, and Ocon's just done it. At the end of the straight, sure, maybe Ocon should have done it a little bit before the braking zone, but um, I don't know, that's a, that's a sensible enough call. The drivers are, should well, just be able to do they didn't manage to do it properly, and then subsequently Ricardo gets a but what, what do you want the, What do you want the team to do then? Uh, just, they if they're going to switch them, do it in a place which doesn't mean that your driver ends up with a five-second time penalty. Like where? I don't know, at the beginning of that strike. Nah, that's a Ricardo <laughs> mistake. It's a Ricardo mistake. The team cool would have come not at that exact moment when Ocon let him through. That would have been Ocon yeah, deciding to let him through there. They wouldn't have said, Esteban, can you let him through on the apex of turn two? No. It would, no, have, been, no. It would have been let him through, and then it's up to Ocon to... Yeah, there's, there's nothing. That's not a, not I, a bad call on the team at all. I it? think Ocon thought he might have a run at Vettel, which is presumably why they were switching to let Ricardo have a go at Vettel. Ocon was pretty close to the back of Vettel, so maybe just thought, well, I'll give it this run down to two, and then if I don't get him, I'll let Ricardo through. Realises he's not going to let him through. 
uh, sorry, realizes that he isn't going to get Vettel, so lets Ricardo through. And remember, Ocon have been behind Vettel a long time. That was why he's even behind Sergio Perez right now, is because he couldn't pass Vettel. So he has now got ahead of Vettel, as has Ricardo. Perez is up the road from Ocon now. Ocon was ahead earlier on, now he's 15 seconds behind with all that uh, being stuck behind Vettel, then letting Ricardo through. But um, yeah, that's exactly probably why Renault decided to switch the places, give Ricardo a chance to pass Vettel, which he duly did. It's, it's not the team's fault that Ricardo missed his breaking point there and, and went straight on. Ricardo's a class driver and uh, as a driver error. Uh, one penalty point for Lewis Hamilton on his uh, license, it has been confirmed. So he won't one for be... each or one for one? One for one, each, surely. One for each, correct. One yeah. for each, so that takes him up to ten. Uh, so he's going to be sketchy for uh, a if, while. He, if he got this in, in Nürburgring next time out, they'd create a half a penalty point for him. <laughs> he's not getting a race pass. <laughs> right, into the pits comes Daniel Kofiak and Sebastian Vettel. Uh, who are our last two pit visitors bar Kimi Raikkonen and um, so yeah Raikkonen's still out there where does Kofiat emerge then ahead of uh, Jovanaps no sorry ahead of Raikkonen so eighth place and ahead of his teammate Pierre Gasly so this is a good drive this from Kvyat started on the hard tyres and uh, he's now come out on the mediums to go to the end 22 more laps and he's only a few seconds behind Ocon as well so on the, the softest compound of anyone still on the track, everyone else basically on the hards, apart from Albon, who's taken a second pit stop, and he's now going to have a racy drive to get some points in the Red Bull on the uh, on the medium tyres. Here's Ricardo. And we do have a five-second penalty for the turn two incident. OK, I'll drive faster. Cheers, buddy. Yeah, that's my bad. I'll make up for it. There we go. I tell you what, he's a classy guy, Ricardo. Yeah, hats off to him for that. I can imagine just being fuming in the car with that one, but fine. He's accepted the blame. It was his fault, but um, he's going to just drive faster and make up the five seconds. He's already done that to Esteban Ocon. He's six seconds ahead of his teammate. The problem he's got is he's got Charles Leclerc behind him now on fresher tyres, and the Ferrari man now no longer needs to pass Ricardo to gain the place at the end of the Grand Prix. So he's got to stay within those five seconds. I don't understand why turn two is still the way it is. Because it's always been a bit of a sort of silly corner. And all you've got down there is tarmac. It's just a sea of tarmac. So make it not silly. I've never understood that with some tracks when a corner is clearly just a bit, like it's, like it's an okay turn, don't get me wrong. You know, 90 degree right. What else are you gonna have at Sochi, I suppose? But just, just it's just always just a bit messy. They need to slow it down more to, because of the runoff, don't they? So that's why they have a switch back corner rather than get rid of that little kink on the exit. That just slows the drivers down a little bit more to get through turn two because I don't think they can push the runoff back any further. And if they didn't have it, it switching back slightly, then the corner would be too fast and the runoff would no longer be adequate. So I think that's probably why they've got the that little part of the corner it does it's just so frustrating to have track limits on that part to have these race directors instructions that say if you go wide by an inch you have to then plummet off to the left hand side and go through a dusty runoff area which is way more dangerous than uh, just rejoining without gaining any time on the uh, road but if them's the rules them's the rules just ask Lewis Hamilton frustrating rules though that one yeah lap 33 and 53 Bottas leading the Grand Prix. 12.8 uh, seconds ahead of Max Verstappen in second place. Lewis Hamilton third, 22 seconds back from, uh, from Valtteri Bottas now. Set a personal best on that last lap, Hamilton, but seven tenths slower than Bottas on that lap. Perez in fourth, Ricardo fifth, Leclerc is sixth, Ocon is eighth. Uh, sorry, Ocon is seventh, eighth is Kvyat, ninth is Raikkonen, just ahead of Pierre Gasly. So both Alpha Tauri is looking good for uh, a points finish today. Raikkonen is still yet to pit, so I wonder if he's going to do softs at the uh, at the end of this Grand Prix. Uh, then eleventh is Norris, twelfth is Magnussen, thirteenth Grosjean, Giovinazzi and Albon, the top fifteen, uh, Vettel, Latifi and Russell, the eighteen drivers still in the Grand Prix. Stroll and Sainz out on the opening lap. 
as Gasly still trying to fight to get past Kimi Raikkonen and uh, then he will hope close in on his teammate Daniel Kvyat who's about six seconds up the road. Jenny. Yeah, I've just been listening across to Gasly's radio actually. He was asking the team how far to the car. They thought he meant the car behind him, so he told him Norris. Then they th and then he was like, no, not the car behind, car in front. They were like, oh yeah, you know, Ocon's five seconds ahead of you or whatever. He was like, no, the car in front of me. <laughs> I don't know if it's that helpful to ask how much he's behind the car in front when you're actually on the tailpipe of the car in front. I guess it's for DRS purposes then, to get within a second and then have your DRS on the main straight and try and pass. He's within a DRS, he's seven tenths back if he's tuned into us right now. But uh, he's now trying to pass Kimi Raikkonen on the back straight. He might have a chance here. Raikkonen goes slightly defensive. Difficult place to overtake though, turn 13, and Gasly can't make it through. There's a story that Sterling Moss used to once won a race at Goodwood, I think in the 250 short wheelbase Ferrari, listening to the listening to the radio commentary of the of the race he was winning. But Gasly clearly not doing that at the moment. Do you get notified that you have DRS before you get to the DRS line? Yeah, you get green lights on your dash at the detection point. And then, okay. Uh, you can miss them, though, if you're not really paying attention. If you're so focused on the driving on something else, you can miss the fact that you've got DRS. Here goes Gasly now with the DRS on Kimi Raikkonen. This looks like a move that's going to happen, and Raikkonen doesn't make it too difficult. Doesn't really defend this time. Gasly through on the inside and uh, up into ninth place. I think Kimi Raikkonen, rather like Lewis Hamilton right now, is probably hoping for a safety car to make something work of this Grand Prix. Yeah, because if he pits now, he comes out, you know, 15th, 16th kind of area behind his teammate. He'll then be on fresher tyres, so he'll try and carve through the field, but a, but a safety car at this point would work fairly nicely for Raikkonen as they now are on lap 35 with Valtteri Bottas across the line 12 seconds clear of Verstappen Hamilton doing another personal best lap of the Grand Prix but 22 seconds back from Valtteri Bottas Perez in fourth Ricardo fifth Leclerc, Ocon, Kofiak, Gasly, Raikkonen in the top 10 now Perez is actually matching Hamilton for pace pretty much right now. Sergio Perez having a really storming drive. Keep this pace for four more laps. Verstappen 38-7. Keep this pace for four more laps. Feels like an irrelevant radio message to a race leader that's 13 seconds ahead with 18 more laps to go in the Grand Prix. Four more laps, maybe trying to build enough of a gap to, uh, to be able to pit if there's a safety car. That's what I imagine it is to try and build up a gap that if there's a safety car Bottas can pit and still emerge ahead of Max Verstappen so he's just trying to build up the uh, the safety car pit window right now Valtteri Bottas but he's so untroubled at the front Verstappen and the Red Bull just doesn't have any pace to try and match the Mercedes they're all having probably fairly boring drives right now Bottas 13 seconds ahead of Hamilton Verstappen just 10 seconds ahead of Hamilton but very very comfortable and Hamilton's just six seconds ahead of Perez that's actually the closest fight of the top five Okay, Bottas last lap was a 38-4. Uh, we're losing six cents in a straight line. Yeah, I'm just uh, trying to do my own race here. Yeah, perfect. So, Verstappen being told we're losing six tenths in a straight line to the Mercedes. And I feel like we're getting a... It's not... Maybe, Andrew Benson, are you there? Are you willing to have a conversation with me? Um, we've won lap 36 of 53. Oh, no. We're going to talk to you in, in a minute after I've done an update into Five Live. But get ready. It's going to be a great question and a really interesting conversation that we're, that we're going to have on lap 36 of 53 uh, with Bottas leading, Verstappen second, Hamilton third, Perez fourth, Ricardo fifth, Leclerc sixth, Ocon seventh, Kvyat eighth, ninth is Gasly, tenth is Kimi Raikkonen. Then uh, we've got Norris, Magnussen, Grosjean, Giovinazzi, Albon, the top 15. It's the same. 13.7 seconds up the road from Max Verstappen in second. Verstappen has just been on the radio saying he really doesn't have the, the pace here. And Lewis Hamilton is running in third. Jolian Palmer, the former Renault Off One driver, with me in commentary. And this is now pretty straightforward for, for Bottas. This is nay a thriller of a race, that is for sure. Bottas is just commanding it. 14 seconds pretty much ahead of Max Verstappen, who's pitted. Bottas has pitted. Hamilton's pitted 10 seconds further back. They're all kind of set for a podium, all going to the end of the Grand Prix on hard tyres. 
not much more to say. Right, well, he's sold it very well. We, we, will be, we will be commentating on the rest of the Grand Prix and Sports Extra if you can be bothered to tune into it. Good work, Jolian. Thriller. You sold me this race. <laughs> <laughs> things have happened. Things have happened. Oh, look, things have happened. Lap one, there was, there was a bit of incident. But out front, I mean, these gaps are just... Yeah. There is a bit stagnant, to say the least. When Bottas is trying to get a pit stop window ahead of second place, who could almost get a pit stop window ahead of third place, who's Lewis Hamilton ahead of Sergio Perez, it's, uh, it's not a thriller just yet. But who knows? Raikkonen's pitted, and we could see a charge from the fin to the flag. And he's had a slow pit stop. Loses a couple of seconds on the front left, but it's fine. Uh, Ocon's under big pressure here from Kvyat. So Ocon, after looking really good in the early stages of the Grand Prix, now slipping back into the into the clutches of Kvyat, who in turn is having one of his best drives of the season, I would say. Ocon's now 11 seconds behind Ricardo. So when Ricardo said, fine, I'll just drive a bit quicker, he, he can. And he's almost got five seconds to Leclerc as well behind him. So in the race of large gaps between cars, Ricardo's five second penalty might not mean a lot in 16 laps time. But he's doing a good job, Ricardo. And on the other, on the flip side, Ocon, his teammate, who was having a great race earlier on, is coming under pressure from Daniel Kvyat. The battle for seventh will rage in the next few laps. Kvyat on the fresher tyres, the medium tyres, because he started on the hard. Ocon's going to have his work cut out here, Jenny. Yeah, he certainly is. He's just been on the radio saying that he's got no grip at all. Is there anything that the team can do to try and help him? So he's not in a happy place right now. Um, and just to point out, Lando Norris on the hard tyres, he's been on them for 35 laps. Kimi Raikkonen got 37 out of his hard tyres. So interesting to see, can Norris hold on to the end of this race or will he have to pit again? He's just done his fastest lap of the Grand Prix. So whether that's a push to then pit or, uh, or just doing pretty nicely we'll wait and see um, he's not too far ahead of Kevin Magnussen there's only 1.9 seconds between them and everybody now is queuing up behind Roman Grosjean as well Grosjean uh, Giovinazzi and Albon those three drivers but Andrew Benson BBC Chief of One Rider Verstappen Project. being told we're losing higher <laughs> six tenths on the on the straight are we starting to get a little bit of Red Bull engine not happy murmurings again it just feels like that's kind of starting to rumble nowhere near the the Renault kind of relationship but what do you think well they're not saying that publicly but they are dropping hints that of exactly that of exactly what you say it's actually been really interesting Honda there was big talk before the season started about how big a step forward Honda had made over the winter um, and yet the season started and Red Bull were miles further behind Mercedes than they were um, last year. Now, some of that was the car. Obviously, at the beginning of the year, the car was a real handful. They hadn't got the aerodynamics sorted. Um, and now it's better on that basis. At least it's more stable than it used to be. But they are losing a lot of time on the straights to Mercedes. But I think, you know, and the question is, you know, first of all, there's several questions. Did Honda suffer from the rule clarifications on the engines as well as Ferrari have. They've just managed to cover it up a bit better. I think there's a suspicion that that's going on because people are talking about the Renault now being the second most powerful engine. Mercedes is obviously the best. And the second question is, yes, the Red Bull's quick in the corners, but are they in a kind of McLaren situation? You know, back, to, back in the Alonso Honda days, McLaren got their assessment of the Honda engine's performance wrong because they were running the car with too much drag and they didn't realize it. You know, I think it's a, you'll never get the answer to the question because there's no way of comparing. But I think it's a valid question to ask, you know, um, where exactly is the Red Bull car in terms of its lift drag ratio? Uh, where exactly is the Honda engine uh, in terms of its uh, torque curve, no one actually knows the truth in terms of the true comparisons between the engines other than the FIA. Yeah, interesting stuff. So, yeah, because that, that wasn't re when when the whole uh, engine rule clarification saga was happening last year, it was it seemed very much only focused at Ferrari stopping Ferrari you know, that kind of thing. No one, I, I don't believe at the time, I don't remember anyone going, oh, I wonder if this will hurt 
other manufacturers because the inference was that only Ferrari were being cheeky with these rules, let's let's say. So it's interesting that that now, sort of a year later, is starting to be the be the curiosity. Yeah, people are murmuring about it. Have Honda been affected by those clarifications? Uh, not in the same way, to the same degree as Ferrari, but but the, but there is that feeling beginning to build. But it's one of those things. It's quite a nebulous subject because you, you can't really. You, you just just no way you're ever going to get an answer to it. It's just you can all you can look at is comparisons from this to that, and and you can draw conclusions, and those conclusions may or may not be accurate. But those are the sort of questions the other teams are beginning to ask. Yeah, uh, lap 40 of 53. Alex Albon's made up a couple of places. He's got ahead of uh, Giovinazzi and um, Grosjean just now. So Albon's up into 12th place and we'll try and close down on Kevin Magnussen in front. But yeah, I, that, I just thought of that, Jolien, because that radio message to Verstappen seemed pretty kind of pointed, I suppose. Yeah, there's no real point in saying you're losing six tenths on the straights. It doesn't help the driver at the time. It doesn't help anyone apart from a highlight that, hey, Presto, our car's pretty good and the engine's not great, which is Red Bull's kind of PR strategy since this hybrid era began. Not so much with Honda, but all the time with Renault. And um, yeah, the, it is the first hint that things are not all great with their engine. And it's true, they, they've slipped a long way since Pierre Gasly outdragged Lewis Hamilton to the line in Brazil last year. Gasly in the yeah. Toro Rosso, yeah. just outpowering Hamilton up the hill to the line in Brazil on just a flat out section, really. Um, there it seemed like Honda had an engine that could match Mercedes. This year, they have clearly slipped back a reasonable amount. So I think Andrew might be absolutely spot on with that. As ever, Jenny. Uh, yes, just to give you a clarification on Lewis Hamilton and his penalty points in his licence. So, as we've already said, 12 points on your licence and you get a one-race ban. Lewis Hamilton now has 10 points on his licence and he's going to have to be a seriously good boy for the next four races because two points will only drop off on the 17th of November, which takes us to just after Turkey. So, for the next four races, Germany, Portimao, Imola and Turkey, he is not going to be able to pick up more than two penalty points Otherwise, that's it. He gets a one-race ban. And actually, with how condensed the calendar is this year, it makes it harder because there's so many more races in a short space of time. And yeah. it's 12 months rather than 20 races that they come off. So it's a fair point. Even if the FIA wanted to give him half a penalty point, he has got to be careful when he's that close to, um, to the 12 points with still numerous races to go before anything comes off. Having said that, he could take a race ban and still be champion. But... Um, is, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be a great image for him or the sport to ban maybe the greatest ever driver for doing a practice start outside of the designated pit area. Well, here's, well, here's the thing. What are all the other penalty infringements for? I can't. I don't have a list of them, and I can't remember. Really, some of them are for whacking Alex Albon at various points in the last 12 months. That's true. But uh, oh, Jenny, there's got to be four of them. I think you got the list, Jenny. But there, there's, yeah. there's those. But I guess a lot of them are little niggles. Uh, so he's got two points for each of his infringements. Um, so the Brazilian Grand Prix, the collision on the 17th of November, that's the one that will drop off soonest. And then ignoring yellow flags at the Austrian Grand Prix on the 5th of July, same day as the collision with Albon on the 5th of July. And then the 6th of September, when the pit lane was closed, he came into it, so he gets another two points for that. So that's the eight points plus two today. Takes you to ten. They're not actually very niggly. They're all actually quite major things. Vettel going up the inside of Roman Grosjean, down into uh, the first corner, and Grosjean, ugh. See, this is why the rules are just so stupid at turn two. Grosjean got overtaken by Vettel. Because he ran wide over the curbs, because Vettel was overtaking him, he then had to go through the two polystyrene chicanes, but he couldn't get over there because he's driving a Formula One car at 200 miles an hour, so he just ploughed straight through them. It, that is, is exactly shows the, the stupidity of this rule, really. Grosjean was on the outside of Vettel. Vettel made the move through. Oh, they had a big touch, actually. Grosjean and Vettel. Looked like Vettel made the move nice and cleanly. The touch would have been on, uh, on Roman Grosjean coming back in and did. The right front of Grosjean hit the left rear of Vettel. And that's still because Grosjean's desperately trying to stay within track limits on the exit of the corner because he doesn't want to go around this polystyrene bollard. He's then rejoining the track and then thinks, oh no, I've got to go through this. Basically, it makes it like Lowe's hairpin when you're trying to turn very hard left and then hard right when you're that committed around the corner. And that's 
kind of what happened to Daniel um, Ricardo. Ricardo's maybe not quite as extreme as Grosjean just there, but it's a really odd runoff area in uh, in Sochi. And Grosjean obviously has read the rule book. <laughs> Indeed. So that 42 of 53. Yeah, all of those uh, penalty points for Hamilton were were kind of major infringements when I when I think back okay the collisions maybe you could say some of them are, were a bit of a racing incident maybe in Brazil but failing to slow under yellow flags entering the pit lane when it's closed yeah they're, 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 they're major things yeah and it, and it makes sense really that they were all two points and this one was one point because this one was a more minor infringement yeah. than, than going too fast under yellow flags clearly a safety issue and uh, pitting when the pit lane is shut, again, a safety issue. This one, a more minor infringement. Therefore, the cynic would say everything else was two points. This one should be two points as well. Therefore, he'd get a ban. Virtual safety car. So has Raikkonen had a problem here? We're just seeing Raikkonen getting back up to speed, but the virtual safety car deployed. Oh, it's to fix the bollards. We've got to fix the polystyrene at turn two. Otherwise, no one will be able to follow the stupid rules. <laughs> so, so don't worry everybody they've fixed the polystyrene and uh, we can go racing again Gasly pitted from inside the top 10 so Gasly taking the uh, the time and the initiative to come into the pits but I don't know if that's going to work out for him because we're now racing again and he's trundling down the pit lane so he didn't benefit from the full extent of the virtual safety car so Wheels changed, away goes Gasly, but yeah, he's, uh, it's going to cost him time, I think. Jenny? Yeah. yeah, Gasly was having a horrible time, really struggling for grip on those tyres. He wanted to come in anyway, so I suppose they've capitalised a little bit when the virtual safety car was out. Listening to team radio, so so many of the drivers struggling for grip at the moment. Latifi shouting down his radio and the Williams, uh, Russell as well in that Williams. They're just, they're, no one's enjoying this race, even the people out on track by the sounds of things. <laughs> At least we've got fans there for this one. 30,000 fans allowed in. I'm not quite sure there's any social distancing going on. It's all very strange. And there's even more fans outside looking on at this one. If only they could have come to Monza or Mugello. Yeah. The races were great there. Albon's back in the point with that pit stop for Pierre Gasly, who has actually emerged just two and a half seconds behind Alex Albon. So that is going to, there is going to be a battle for the edge of the points. Lando Norris right now in ninth, 1.3 seconds ahead of Alex Albon. Norris has only pitted the once on lap one. Albon took his second pit stop and is on a fresher set of mediums. And Gasly's just taken his second pit stop and is on a much fresher set of mediums. So they're all going to bunch up for ninth place. Ahead of them is a bit of a battle for seventh place with Esteban Ocon still just ahead of Daniel Kvyat. Less than one second separating those two. And then for the top six, it's the race of big gaps. Daniel Ricciardo now eight seconds clear of Charles Leclerc so he can take his penalty and remain comfortably in fifth place. That 44 of 53. Bottas leading, 11 seconds clear of Hamilton, uh, sorry, of Verstappen in second. Then it's Hamilton third, Perez fourth. Daniel Ricciardo in fifth, as you say, holding on to that fifth even despite a five-second time penalty uh, at the moment anyway. Leclerc in sixth, Ocon seventh, eighth for Kvyat, uh, and then Kvyat still only half a second behind Esteban Ocon in their fight over seventh place. 20 seconds back to Norris in ninth, who's just six tenths ahead of Alex Albon in tenth. Gasly in 11th. Magnussen 12th, Giovinazzi 13th, 14th Vettel, 15th Raikkonen, Latifi and Russell now battling it over for 16th position. We're going to enjoy a nice little fight between the Williams drivers. 16th and 17th. It's not going to be uh, giving them a lot of glory by the end of the race, but Latifi still ahead of his teammate, George Russell, which he has been since lap one when Russell took that pit stop. They both sit pitted and uh, still running just a second apart. And Latifi's just had a really squirmy exit at the final corner. I don't actually think Russell's going to be close enough to capitalise down the main straight. They've both just been lapped by Lewis Hamilton. I think that's why they bunched up momentarily. Lap 45 of 53. Ocon still under pressure from Daniel Kafia. George Russell right behind Nicholas Latifi. The sound you can hear is 
Alex Albon trying to get ahead of Lando Norris and uh, Gasly's caught them really quickly actually. Gasly's right on the back of Albon and Norris almost before you know it. The three of them turn through turn 13 and Norris could be in danger here of getting uh, shuffled out of the uh, of the points completely. Yeah, old hard tyres now. They've done 44 laps since pitting at the end of lap one and he's got two cars crawling over the back of him. Okay, Pierre, let's go get what we deserve. Let's go get what we deserve. Gasly's quick. His race engineer saying, go and get what we deserve. He was in ninth place. And if he can pass these two cars ahead, he'll be back there. And Albon is bunched up behind Lando Norris, who just weaves gently to try and break the slipstream down towards turn two. Here comes Albon. Here comes Gasly. Down towards the second corner. Norris covers the inside line. Albon sends it to the outside. And Norris holds the place for the time being. Gasly is right on the back of the Red Bull as they swing through the left-hander now of turn three. In fact, Albon might even get a run into four here. They go right together and Norris is holding his line just about keeping Albon behind. He's going to struggle to do this for the remaining eight laps of the Grand Prix, though. Now up into turn four. A little bit wide there for uh, Alex Albon and Norris just has no speed coming off corners and Albon tries to go around the outside at seven where's Gasly in all of this he's still tucked in behind he's got a good run looks to the inside coming down into turn eight and nine and that's going to compromise Albon a lot that gives Norris huge breathing space and there Gasly goes to the outside coming into turn 10 he'll then get the switch back and the DRS on the run down to 13 and Albon I don't think he'll get DRS at all and that means Pierre Gasly out races Albon and up into 10th spot Lap 46 of 53, Bottas 10 seconds ahead of Verstappen. We're going to be doing an update into Five Live in a moment, but that was some really nice racing. We'll get Jolian's thoughts on it in a second. Now, that means Norris has 1.4 seconds over Pierre Gasly. Valtteri Bottas still leading, 10 seconds clear of Max Verstappen, who is 10 seconds clear of Lewis Hamilton. So it's fairly standard out up front. Uh, Sergio Perez doing a good job in fourth position. And we're having a nice fight for ninth place. Uh, Lando Norris, Pierre Gasly and Alex Albon all swapping positions, which is a lot of fun. So, yeah, we're over for the, the last seven laps or so on Five Live Sports Extra. That was great. Uh, Gasly served him up a cropper there. I don't really know the phrase I'm trying to... But he just set him up perfectly on a silver platter. That's exactly it. It was uh, it was actually slightly unfortunate for Albon. It, Norris had no energy coming out of turn five from his hybrid power unit. I'm sure he's got energy in his uh, human being. But um, Albon got a huge run at him coming into turn seven, and uh, can't he can't make a move around the outside of turn seven. But it put him massively out of position, and. Uh, that basically left Gasly with a big run on him and he managed to uh, serve him up a cropper for a couple of corners and then <laughs> DRS passed him. So Albon really just in the wrong parts of the track at the wrong time and Gasly's through on those fresher medium tyres and now he's hunting down Norris and he might pass him here. Down towards turn 13. Looks to the outside, but Norris is late on the brakes. Roman Grosjean now is under investigation in the Haas for failing to follow the race director's instructions because they're impossible to follow but there we go i mean to be clear to be fair you can't say he didn't go through the bollards he, yeah, went, through he, went, the bollards. he went through the bollards i think that was the issue <laughs> brought out the virtual safety car and no oh, further action wow common sense has prevailed the he lost the best part of five seconds trying to do that i don't know if they should give him a five second penalty on top of that but no further action, sensible decision there. Wow. Note this time down, 13.37 on uh, Sunday. Up the inside goes Pierre Gasly, up into ninth position on Lando Norris. Nothing Norris could do about that. He's got so little grip out there, Norris, and I think he's going to fall back behind Albon before too long. Although we are on lap 48 of 53, so he's got a bit of a chance of keeping him behind, but... Albon in the quicker car is surely going to get through at some point. Uh, Kvyat is still just seven tenths of a second behind Esteban Ocon and not able to do anything over, over seventh place. So both Alpha Tauris, to be fair, having a pretty good drive today. They are. Difficult circuit to overtake on. Albon's found that out. Gasly's made it look a little bit easier. But um, Kvyat's still behind Esteban Ocon. 
who's uh, on course for a seventh place right now, if he can just keep the Russian behind for the next five laps. Tell you what, Kevin Magnussen's having a good drive. He's not far off the back of this Norris Albon battle. If Albon can't clear Norris quickly, he's going to have Kevin Magnussen behind. He's just a couple of seconds away from Albon, lapping quicker. Norris, big lock up, and that was going to gift it to Albon. At turn 13, Albon goes through. Lap 48 of 53. Albon then up into. Oh, and a big lock up from Norris coming into. 15 and 16 as well. He's going to have to pit, surely. The tyres don't want to be on the car anymore, and he does peel off to the right-hand side into the pit and effectively out of any scoring, any point scoring contention. Lando Norris this afternoon. He's been on those set of tyres for 47 laps. Some of them were under safety car, about four of them earlier on. But it was always going to be a tricky ask to get him to the end of the race on them, and he didn't make it. Into the pits then, five laps to go for Lando Norris. Tough day for McLaren, no points for either of their drivers. Jenny. Just bolting on another set of the mediums for him to go to the end of this race, as you say, really difficult points wise for them when other people seem to have uh, done fairly well out of this. Alpha Tauri and Renault, those midfield teams uh, with a double points haul if they can get to the end of this race. Just to let you know why it's so difficult to overtake, you need a 1.2 second advantage if you're trying to overtake. The Delta here is so difficult to do. Yeah, five laps to go. Trevor Nazi's just passed Kevin Magnussen for 11th place. So a good drive from him. They're about to be lapped by Valtteri Bottas, who's now coming through the midfield skirmish. Still cruising, seven and a half seconds ahead of Verstappen, but Verstappen has done the fastest lap of the race, the last lap, pushing hard. The gap's seven seconds, but with four laps to go, Bottas is just cruising home now for the win. Hamilton still running in third position. Perez in fourth, Ricardo in fifth. His advantage over Leclerc now ten and a half seconds, so fairly comfortable. Uh, shame for Esteban Ocon today. I was quite excited by him in the early stages of the Grand Prix, but he's now under big pressure from Daniel Kafia. Well, still under pressure from Daniel Kafia, and uh, Roman Grosjean's just had a lockup down at turn two and uh, gone straight on through the ball. Well, not quite straight on through the bollards, but round the bollards in the appropriate manner this time. I think that was a replay of, of the earlier one, wasn't it? Well, no, because he didn't smash them to pieces. No, but he already went through them, and then he smashed them to pieces. Unless he's been through for a third time. Maybe he's been through for a third time. Yeah, I think he, he has, has actually. lap time deleted. Three times. And no pens. Yeah. Uh, Vettel on the back of Kevin Magnussen now. Grosjean's just got ahead of George Russell for 17th position. But yeah, Ocon was looking pretty good, but he's going to end this race 20 seconds behind his teammate Daniel Ricciardo. And mainly because he just doesn't have the pace of his teammate. I don't think there's anything else to blame for Ocon. He had a good start, got ahead of Ricciardo, who was running in third place temporarily as, Rick, as Verstappen went across the runoff area at turn two. Then Ocon passed his teammate. Verstappen passed Ricciardo as well. Ocon ran a very good fourth place in the first stint, but then lost the place to Perez in the pit stop phase, got stuck behind Sebastian Vettel, had to let Ricardo through. In doing that, Ricardo earned himself a five second penalty, but it's going to count for nothing because he's got 10 seconds to Leclerc behind. And as you say, it's 16 seconds to Esteban Ocon. So Ricardo's driven a very, very accomplished race, but not a patch on Sergio Perez today, who's uh, a good chunk ahead of him, 15 seconds ahead of Ricardo. They're all now queuing up for 11th place behind Antonio Giovinazzi. Well, Giovinazzi's got ahead of Magnussen, as you alluded to, and now getting away a little. Then it's Magnussen in 12th position, who's just ahead of Vettel, who's just ahead of Raikkonen. So it's not been a good race this for Sebastian Vettel. I think he got a bit caught up at the, at the, in the start chaos, had to sort of take a bit of evasive action. Three laps to go with Bottas leading the Grand Prix. Um, a word on Bottas then. I can't really think of what to say now I think about it because he, Good. to be fair, he was racy at the start. I would give him 10 out of 10 for his, for his race start, maybe 9 out of 10 because he didn't pull it off, but properly committed, properly went for it, and it didn't work out, but more often than not, if he does that this season, sometimes it will work out. If he'd have done that at Mugello or Silverstone or any of those occasions, one of them might have worked. He has my respect for giving it a go at the first corner this time. So often I've been disappointed at his lack of fight. Here he gave it a great shot. And at the end of the day, he still did get ahead of Verstappen at the start. And that has proved 
important through the race. Verstappen is six and a half seconds away and now going through that plethora of traffic. But um, yeah, Bottas very good. He's not had a challenge since the since the first lap really when Hamilton was penalised and he's not had to do a lot to win the Grand Prix in the faster car than the Red Bull. His teammate's been dealt a 10-second uh, penalty and is out of contention from pretty much the word go. But I, I at least like the bits that he has done of, of the race, which is an aggressive first corner, effectively. Yeah, that's true. That's, that's literally all he's had to do, isn't it? Uh, so lap 51 and 53, Bottas leading 7.4 seconds ahead of Hamilton. Fastest lap of the Grand Prix, pinged in by Pierre Gasly in the in the Alpha Tauri, who's going to finish in ninth spot. That'll be worth a point if he can hold on, but he can't hold on. Valtteri <laughs> Bottas has just done the second good thing of his afternoon. He's taken fastest lap. This could be the last thing that uh, there's up for grabs, really, the final point for fastest lap. Hamilton still on those uh, more used hard tyres because he had to pit earlier than Bottas and Verstappen. But Bottas's lap's actually only two tenths quicker than Gasly's. But he manages to get it nevertheless. No one's in a... Even Hamilton's not in a, not in a window, actually, to... to uh, it's actually... Perez, 28 seconds off the back of Bottas in the racing point is not that far. In the grand scheme of Grand Prix so far this season, usually, and there's been no safety cars since lap, what was it, six. Normally, the top three, one of them, could easily have a, a window to do a pit stop and go for fastest lap, but, but none of them do here. No, uh, Perez has driven a blinder today. We haven't seen anything of him because I don't think he's really made an overtake, but... He was quick in the pit stop window when he when it counted, and he's stayed within 10 seconds of Lewis Hamilton the whole way home in the Grand Prix. Ricardo has uh, not been able to close him down at all, despite pulling away from the two behind. Perez has had very, very good paces. He does have drives where he's just on form, Sergio Perez. Some, some days he goes missing, but some days he just puts in a really collective performance and uh, if one of the top three dropped out he'd pick up a podium with the result that he's had today best of the rest but doesn't look like they are going to drop out fourth place russell's pitted again right at the end of this grand prix for uh, for reasons that i am uncertain about as valtteri bottas starts the final lap of the race very commanding performance this from from bottas ultimately in the fastest car out there but still a He's had to get the job done, and he is getting the job done. And this is going to close in the championship lead a little for what it's worth. It'll be a, a 10 point, uh, an 11 point swing, so it'll come down to 54 points between Hamilton and Bottas. Oh, sorry, 44 points, my apologies. So the Hamilton has to miss a Grand Prix with his race ban. With his race ban, <laughs> and Bottas wins it with fastest lap. It'll be down to 18 points. Final lap then for Valtteri Bottas around the Sochi circuit. Again, we thought this might be a Sochi thriller. It's once again not provided that. This racetrack on the shores of the Black Sea is a Sochi thriller, an oxymoron. <laughs> <laughs> but it's been a race, that's for sure. And here he comes through the final couple of corners for Valtteri Bottas into the chicane. As soon as Hamilton got that penalty, all he needed to do was stay ahead of him. Hamilton's actually going for the fastest lap on this final lap. Bottas with a bit of a slide coming out of turn 16, but he's got a very good record here, Valtteri Bottas, and he continues that record by winning the Russian Grand Prix. Bottas takes victory incredibly comfortably. The Mercedes team win again in Russia. Max Verstappen finishes second in the end. As he comes across the line, he went for fastest lap in the end, but was three tenths of a second away from it. Hamilton comes across the line to finish in third place after a time penalty earlier on today for an illegal practice start. And that's the top three. Sergio Perez is going to finish fourth. Fifth for Daniel Ricciardo, sixth for Charles Leclerc. Ocon's going to hold on to seventh. He's been ahead of Daniel Kafiat by less than a second for a long time. And Albon... It's going to finish 10th, but he has been given a five-second time penalty for... And actually, it's not over here with Ocon and Kafiat. Kafiat is right there with the Renault driver. He's got a good run go, going for it into the left-hander of 
15 and 16, but he just didn't commit quite as much as you might have thought. So Albin obviously has gone off the circuit towards the end of this lap and in his fight with Gasly and has been given a five second time penalty. And out across the line comes Ocon for a seventh place finish. Eighth for Kafiat, ninth for Gasly, tenth for Albin. And then we've got Giovinazzi 11th, Magnussen 12th, Vettel, Raikkonen and Norris the top 15, Latifi, Grosjean and Russell. The 18 finishers, Stroll and Sainz were out of the Grand Prix on the first lap of the race. But Valtteri Bottas the winner. Yes, mate! Get in there! Yes! <laughs> yeah! I think, again, it's a nice moment to thank my critics, to whom it may concern you. He loves that. And that is to you, Jolian Palmer. Well, look, I have been critical of the start, and he's responded with a good first. I just I give him a bit of praise. A good first corner. The critics might argue that he didn't have a lot of challenge today, but um, a win is a win with the fastest lap point as well. Hamilton couldn't do anything on that with the older tyres. And uh, an accomplished drive there from Valtteri Bottas. There is something, though, that when you... I don't... Look, I'm not... I'm not but if... Here's for Sapper's radio. Uh, cracking job, Max. Pretty happy with that. Nice one. T2. Yeah, well done, Max. That was a great job. Well done. You got everything everything you could out of it today. Yeah, we split the two cars again, so... Not bad for Zelda. Good job. Yeah, with Bottas, if, if every time you win, you're saying, take that, critics, but you're winning so rarely that you have to say that it kind of suggests that you're winning quite rarely and and he's got to win in a square fight hasn't he really yeah. let's be honest he's not won in a square fight here he's done a good race he i like this start i like that he took the fight to hamilton he appears to be listening to the critics because that has been the main area of criticism here we go never give up indeed never give up mate Never give up. But Hamilton wasn't there to fight him today. And that, uh, I think that could have made a big difference. Valtteri Bottas has won the Russian Grand Prix. Lewis Hamilton had to serve a 10 second penalty at his pit stop for um, taking, making an illegal start before the race even got underway. He then finished 22 seconds behind Bottas. So Bottas takes the win. He's been on the radio uh, saying rude things to his critics and uh, as he feels a certain amount of redemption, Jolian Palmer, after that win. Yep, a very accomplished drive, but I have to say he was fairly unchallenged. Lewis Hamilton's 10 second penalty earlier on put him out of contention. Hamilton was leading the race at the time, and uh, then that gave the lead to Valtteri Bottas. Max Verstappen in the Red Bull couldn't really challenge, so a good drive from Bottas. I don't know if it's going to absolutely silence the critics, but um, nonetheless, a win, a fastest lap, job done today. So we'll have full reaction later on on the Checker Flag podcast, which you'll be able to download. But Valtteri Bottas takes the win at the Russian Grand Prix. Verstappen second, Hamilton third. So a round of applause for Valtteri Bottas as he fist bumps all of the crew. Jenny. Yeah, interesting. He's a usual race engineer, isn't here this weekend. Uh, Ricky's at home waiting on the birth of his second child. So it was actually um, Dom Reifstall who was engineering him today. And he'll be the man collecting the constructor's trophy on the podium. OK, well, that's good for Valtteri Bottas. That's uh, good to get a relationship like that off to a good start. And Hamilton... Finishing in third position. Again, Bottas chips away at the lead of the championship. And had it not been for that Q2 kerfuffle yesterday for Hamilton, it could have been quite different as well. Not only did he have the penalty, but he started on the soft tyre, which didn't give him a chance to build a gap and take the fight, even in race terms, to Valtteri Bottas because he started on that soft tyre. So it was a bit of a double whammy for Hamilton this weekend. Ultimately, bad luck yesterday and a driver error at one point just going over track limits. But the two combined, the penalty today, without one of them or the other, he might have won. 
I think with the... Well, let's hear from the top three, shall we? Uh, Bottas, Verstappen and Hamilton, they're going to be speaking to Johnny Herbert. Well, I'm here now with Max Verstappen. Max, second place. Interesting battle going towards uh, turn one. You said he got off the line very well. Then Valtteri got in front of you. But of course, then you had, I think, Danny Ricciardo at your side. You decided to go through that penalty chicane. What was it like for us, for you? Yeah, just a uh, very low grip on the inside. So, um, yeah, that cost us a bit. But at the end, I think uh, it was quite interesting. The first, uh, first few corners, of course, I had to take that uh, out of chicane. And uh, luckily got through there without any issues but um, yeah after that um, after the, sa the restart I think we were a little bit slower on the on the medium I was having a bit of problems with the balance but once we uh, went on to that hard tire I think we were a little bit more competitive so uh, pretty happy about that and you know at the end to be able to, to split the Mercedes cars again I think uh, we can be pleased with that. Was there any worry at some points once you saw sort of Lewis get into that third place you thought now I've got a fight on my hands? No, I was just trying to do my own race. You know, they're faster, they, they will anyway pass you. Um, but yeah, well, I think we managed it well and I, I did everything I could. You've got to be happy though, second place going into Nürburgring next time out. I, I'm, I'm very happy with second, especially after two DNFs, you know, so again, a good amount of points. Right, well done, okay, I think we might have our race winner. No, we're not. We're going to get our third place man, Lewis Hamilton. Lewis. What a frustrating day for you again. Tell us about what happened right at the fr frustrating day for you. But what happened with the practice starts and of course then that 10 second penalty that you got. What happened there? Well, first I want to say a big thank you to all the fans that came this weekend. Big thank you. Spasiba. Um, yeah, it's just not the greatest day, but. Yeah. Is what it is. But how did that go wrong? Isn't it surely? Because I know there was a, a, some notes that had come out from the FIA. Michael Matty had mentioned about where you can and cannot start. Why is it you ended up so far down the end of the pit lane? Uh, it doesn't matter. It's done now. So. Oh, okay. Right just, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. I take the points that I got and uh, move on. All right. The race itself, though, great little comeback from you. Uh, not particularly, I didn't really do much, I just held my position, so, uh, no, but congratulations to Valtteri. Yeah, okay, I know you're disappointed, thanks a lot. I got a race winner, he's going to be a happy bunny, I'm sure. Oh yeah, nice cheer there. Valtteri, race win, but it was very tricky going down to turn two, where you tried to go around the outside of Lewis, then got stuck on that curb. Just talk us through that. Yeah, obviously tried, and it, the start is going to be the first opportunity. Actually, <laughs> it was a bit compromised because there was like a massive B or something that hit my visor just before braking, so I couldn't really see the, when I should brake. So that's why I went too deep. But uh, I knew it's going to be a long race after that, and with a medium tire I had, there will be opportunities, but obviously lose at the penalty. So, yeah, once I was in clean, clean air, uh, I felt the pace was... Pretty, pretty awesome and could really control everything. Yeah, what about Max? Because Max was obviously there a little bit earlier on, pushing you very hard. Were you a bit concerned in those early laps that he might sort of challenge you? No, I wasn't that concerned at any point because looking at the pack spot today, I knew how many opportuni opportunities there, there would be. And um, yeah, I, yeah, never give up. You know, yeah. it's, uh, it's a good day. But it's your ninth win, your second here in Russia, going towards Nürburgring. You must have a lot of confidence to take there for sure it's nice to get a win again it's been been a while um, and yeah definitely good yeah need to try and keep the momentum again managed to uh, squeeze a bit of points against Lewis it's still quite a few races to go and you just never know I'll keep pushing and won't give up and we'll see what, how it ends up yeah thanks it might be back on well done thank you so championship might be back on, says Johnny Herbert with the questions. 44 points is the difference. We're still, we're still just baffled by the big B. Not a big B, a giant B. Jolian Palmer, what's the worst thing you've ever had <laughs> trapped in your helmet? I don't think it was in his helmet. It said the giant B hit his visor, and that's why he showed aggression at the first corner. So we, he, we, he outbraked himself. We basically take it all back. Well... There we go. Who knew a massive B would be the deciding factor? But 
Massive be or not, didn't stop Bottas from being in top spot today. Congratulations to him. Uh, a win this year, vital, really, for him, for his confidence, for the feel. That's only his second win of the season. And what a day for Lewis Hamilton as well. Two more points on his licence. It's going to be a huge talking point going into the next few races. We have another weekend off next weekend, and then we head to Germany, where I can tell you this weekend, it's been so cold, so wet, so horrible that the 24-hour race had to be red flagged overnight. So that bodes well. Ice tyres on the way, maybe. Who knows? Thank you for joining us. Thanks to the team, as ever. Uh, make sure you download the Checker Flag podcast, which will come out a little bit later on today. This has been an IMG production for BBC Radio 5 Live. Let's return you to the cricket.